Kamara. Oh, not here in the world. Nice. Yeah, I got myself a nice bottle of whiskey. Whiskey? I hardly know her. Yeah, well, work <laughs> on that. Whisker. I hardly. Never mind. Okay. Whisker, not the cat food. Whiskers. <clears throat> Man, see, the other night I was telling somebody else, like, I find myself on. If you ever watch Omega, I like his stuff on YouTube. And I'm watching his game streams. And I get it on his voice chat afterwards. Now, we were talking, the man is a huge wrestling fan, especially the wrestling from the period I used to watch. Sorry, uh, who did you say we were talking about here? Omega. Oh, oh, okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about all kinds of good stuff. And, you know, his, cool. his, he said two of his favorites are the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and the Honky Tonk Man. <laughs> Honky Tonk had some flavor. Hi, LV. Long time no see uh, on the stream, LV. How you doing? He still holds the record for the uh, Intercontinental Championship ring. Nice. What are you having for noms today, Snow? You're stuffed with pizza, LV. I wish I was. Although I had a nice barbecue chicken, so that was that was good too. I made a little stir fry. I got some yeah. shrimp, and uh, then I uh, Ooh, shrimp tacos. Uh, I had some shrimp, and the only uh, veggies I had in the house were some leftover deli stuff. So I nice. Cut and my them usual up. Uh, my usual grocery store does uh, like rotisserie chickens. They, they just, oh yeah. You know, package them up, keep them hot. Mm -hmm. you just grab a grab a package, bring it home. Got a hot right. meal. Uh, we do that over at the Walmart. That's one of our big things. We get this huge thing. It's all about. It's nice filling it. It's like twelve bucks. Two ro two big rotisserie ovens that hold about like twenty chickens each. Wow. Yeah. I don't think we. I don't think ours has that much. <laughs> Still, there's usually like yeah. maybe a dozen available at any given time. We sell them rotisserie chickens. They love them. Yeah, they are good. Nice, nice tender. Uh, meat. Yeah. Um, okay. So I looked up a guide, and apparently I was doing this hunt correctly before. I'm not sure why it wasn't showing up. Uh, and apparently the, the weather changes in this zone more often than I thought. Oh. Uh, so I'm in this area. I don't know if you were here last time I was in this area of last, but this area has two seasons. It's got... A dry season, which it is now, and a rainy season, where the place is like practically a swamp. Uh, and apparently it switches back and forth between them. Uh, apparently the dry season lasts two hours worth of gameplay time, and the wet season is one hour. So if I'm in the wrong season, I'm not going to take too long to change. It's, it's, uh, so in other words, this is set in Mississippi. If you don't like the weather, wait five minutes. Basically. <laughs> Better check here. So right now I'm, I'm hey. hunting for a beastie that has been causing some problems in the area, and uh, I have to kill everything in this area in order to get it to come out. Hey guy. Yeah. Hey guy. Happy yeah. beer day, friend. Happy beer day. Twinkies. Twink. Either. <laughs> Mm. <sighs> whole chicken is not your jam, LV. Mm. I like a whole chicken, <clears throat> especially when that. they've taken all the uh, nasty parts out for me, and all I've got left is stuff to eat. <laughs> I will like get one, and I'll have like the legs and the uh, like the legs, the wings, and the thighs, and then I'll cut up the breast and make like sandwiches out of it later. There you go. Hey. If they could just breed chickens that were just all leg and wing, I'd be happy. That's that sounds a horror, like a, that that sounds like a waiting to happen. 
That sounds like a Patton Oswald bit. Yeah. He actually said that there was a thing where he was talking about KFC came up with something. They were coming up with something called the Mega Leg. He said, that sounds like something out of Revelations. Like, when that's Modus and Leviathan and Mega Leg rose from the depths. <laughs> you should breed winged pigs. There you go. Instead of going yep. up for chicken wings, you go up for pig wings. <laughs> or wings. Uh, actually make real buffalo um, wings. There you go. That, 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 uh, winged pigs would be Parkaswani. Ah. Ooh, I like well, that What was the old... That was the joke back in the day when they said, uh... We'd have a we'd have a black president when when pigs fly. We got Barack Obama and swine flu. <laughs> I like it. But the time of the mega leg and someone's like, did that happen in nature? And I said, we found a way. Oh, hold on, hold it. We found a way. Translation: something went terribly wrong. Mm. Something escaped from a laboratory. We couldn't get the blast door shut soon enough. <laughs> ah, here we go. So the comment about uh, breeding a chicken that's nothing but wings and legs reminds me of... Uh, I was playing this game called um, Torment Tides of Numenera a while back, which is a very weird setting. Yeah. But um, at one point I met this street vendor who had like this vat full of meat and... Mm -hmm. It was just like a big lump of generic flesh. Mm. And it had this property that it was constantly regenerating, so whenever somebody ordered like a kebab, he'd just like slice some off, cook mm. it, and then this piece he sliced off would grow back. Mm. <laughs> so it just had never-ending cool. meat to sell. I always used to love when I was going into Buffalo Wild Wings. and there don't know what things. kind it was. Sorry, go ahead. Back to a special deal on chicken fingers or buffalo. And they're kind of mutated creatures of the raising. <laughs> Chickens with fingers and buffalo with wings. Ah! Uh, LV, to answer your question about what part of the story I am, uh, the last major story thing I did was I went to the Stole Shrine of Miriam and got the Sword of Kings. Uh, and then I came back and dealt with the aftermath of what was going on at the shrine, or at the temple. Uh, and that's where I am. I'm supposed to go to Arcadius next. But I've decided to go do side quests instead. Let's see a rotisserie of that thing. Because I'm behind on my hunts. Maybe I'll make a mess of my nuggets out of that one. There we go. Alright, now kidding. I need to go to. The Osborne Plain, I'm not sure if I can reach it in the dry season, but I'm going to try. I thought try. you were just m making up a word there for fun. That's actually what it was called. What word? Oh, what? Cluckatrice. That was oh, an actual yeah, no, thing that's, in the game. That's its name, yeah. I thought that was something you made up just for fun. Oh, <laughs> balls. It's a, it's a specially uniquely named uh, cockatrice. The trees are very different from the ones. Uh, Not in the fun part yet. If it's if it's female, is it a is it a henna trees? I think it was a female actually. So they could have gone with that, but I guess cockatrice just sounds more fun. A large cut meat cinch. By the fun part, LV, do you mean the um? Uh, the, the crazy magic monster lighthouse later. I've played through the game before, so you don't have to worry about spoilers for me. I don't want to spoiler people who are watching who haven't seen though, but oh, the crystal! Oh, that's 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 a that's a nightmare. That place. I need to I need to go uh, bring up a map when I go there. Oh, wait a second. I'm supposed to go to the village first. Or just walk, complete the hunt and then just walk off with it reporting back to the person who wanted me to hunt it in the first place. Like a goof. Yes. Speaking of goofs, uh, mm. I went downtown to go to the bakery today yes. and was very surprised to find that the bakery was closed because there was a protest going up and down the main street downtown. Why? Uh, because people are idiots the, uh, and don't like vaccines. Oh. 
I thought they were protesting the bakery. I was like, so what would you say, Kai? Do. Is, is, the, is that the truckers, or...? Uh, I think it's just general idiots who are against vaccine mandates. I'll tell you well, what, I mean, whining about so-called "quote unquote" segregation. In general, I'm against yeah. mandates, so yeah. well, because mandates would kill me. Well, obviously, yeah, my, mandates would have exceptions for people like you. They don't. Or that's the problem. Should, "Quote unquote" should. But, but then, yeah, that's the thing is that they don't. Um, I'm all for mandates for everybody who doesn't need an exception like you. I mean, see, I, I don't know, because, like, you know, you support a woman's right to choose, you should support anybody's right to choose. Ah, uh, but the difference right. is... There uh, is no difference. Uh, it's no, a there's, totally a, there's totally a difference. A woman's right to choose affects only herself and her baby, whereas not getting the vaccine can hurt all kinds of people around you. Because mm. it makes you, into a more, makes you more likely to be a carrier and more likely to create mutations and variants. I'm not sure I agree with that statement at all. I do. I was telling somebody about this the other day. My three bullet points for the, that day were first, Peter Dinklage. <laughs> trying to sing it. I don't know. Oh, by the know. way, guys, yeah. so, sorry to interrupt you for, for just a second, but yeah, yeah, do yeah, you guys yeah. remember previously I did. Remember that, that hunt I had for the giant frog away, a while back? Yeah. And. and uh, it, the hunt was given to me by a ghost that was hanging around in this area. To, how, right. Talking about how he'd lost his wedding ring. Yeah. And he wanted us to uh, get it back from the, the giant frog and give it to right. his wife, who was still alive. Yeah. That's this lady here. Oh, cool. She's the elder. Because mm. he's been dead for a while. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, you were Peter saying? Dinkley. Peter Dinkler is on some kind of problem with Disney. I haven't got the full details. Don't I really care? But something to do with a new upcoming uh, live-action Snow White they're doing. And it's about improper representation of dwarfs. It's like it's a fantasy, dude. You can't improperly represent people that don't exist. Uh, hey. oh, 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 the, oh, oh. Run that past me again? Sorry, I, I, I missed something. Oh, uh, I don't know. You know the whole detail. Something Peter Dinklage is up in arms about. About? With this movie and... Uh, which one? Snow White. There's, a, there's an upcoming live action. Oh, okay. Snow White. Yeah, I, I heard about this. It's not. It, he's not upset about it for the reason you might think. Yeah? He's upset about it because they're changing core aspects of the story. Yeah. Like, this like is... Uh, like, Snow White is going to be a person of color. Yeah, like... like Snow they, White. They, they, <laughs> exactly. That's the point that I was going to make. He's actually upset about the fact that they're casting Snow White as a non-white, which... Wait, what? It's right in the fucking name, people. Wait, what's happening? What, what race is the actress doing Snow White? Uh, Hispanic, I believe. Latinx or whatever they call them. Oh, right don't you don't even go there. <laughs> uh, Gal Look, there, there have been uh, the evil queen, so there, there, there have been polls. People have been polled, and ninety nine percent of of Latin people hate Latinx as a term. That's why so, I was mispronouncing it. Latinx. <laughs> God, I hate that shit. Uh, Be as sarcastic I, about I, it as you like. Oh, yes. Anyways, then the other bullet points I had, uh, Neil Young apparently wants all his music pulled from Spotify over because he don't like uh, Joe Rogan. Latin at? Latin at. <laughs> the square root of Latinx by the pot hypotenuse of... Hey. <clears throat> no, it, it's, um... It, 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 that's actually what he's upset about. Is that it's like it has nothing to do with anything really? else. Like, I must have got that wrong. But anyways, um, or yeah. or you read uh, something from somebody else who got it wrong, maybe. Probably so. <laughs> anyways, uh, Neil Young wants his music removed from Spotify's catalog. Here's the thing: he doesn't own all of his music. He sold it off to some other company, so. 
he can pull the stuff that he owns, but if the owners of the rest of his music want it out there, he don't have a say in it. Yeah, that's what my happens only, when you sell your stuff off. My only thought was I'm from Sweet Home, Alabama. I was like, Oh, Neil Young will remember. <laughs> <laughs> but if I don't need him around anyhow. I mean, they're probably making tons more off Joe Rogan's show than anything Neil Young ever did. At least currently. Latinx and sounds like some sort of chemical brand. It kind of does. Yeah. <laughs> Sudlanders. Oh. <laughs> we were Sudlanders. The, the people paler than German. Oh, the Danish? Oh. Germans call Danish people Sudlanders? I could go for a Danish. Turks, Spanish, etc. Oh, okay. Strawberry and cream cheese. Yeah, it's going to be kind of weird having a, a yeah. Latina Snow White. Also sounds kind of hot, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I get the whole, you know, it, I get the inclusion angle, but it feels like it's inclusion for the sake of, and I'm yes. not okay with that. It's the same, you know, the pe people who would support that were probably, were probably the same ones who were pissed about, okay, somebody on TikTok recreated a scene from uh, the... Princess and a Frog movie from a few years ago. Remember that one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I that only existed. it was a white lady redoing the scene. Now she wasn't in blackface, she was just wearing the costume, was recreating the little moves, making the beignets and everything. And people were like, How dare she culture from I say, like, hold on there. Yeah. The Princess and the Frog came from European shit. It was originally white. Ha. Disney ha. just put it in New Orleans in the 40s and put a black person that version. I just think it's especially weird with Snow White considering she's a character who was named what she was named specifically because she right. was so pale. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, they, it, it, there's an irony aspect to it for sure. There, but I, I think they should have made they should have found the darkest black person they could find. <laughs> <laughs> Only if they were going to make it as a, as a comedy. I will say that, one thing. Well, there, apparently they are. There's an old cartoon. This is after that movie uh, Snow White and the Huntsman came out. And of course, hey, they part found the perfect place to play Snow White there, the palest bitch in Hollywood, Kristen Day uh, Stewart. Isn't that, that sounds like a porn title. Yeah. But uh, anyways, so there was a cartoon where it has a queen laughing, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? It's a Snow White. What? How can you say she's more beautiful than me? Oh, whoa, whoa. Like in the Seven Giants. <laughs> it's a, you said, like, molding it. You said who's the fairest. <laughs> let me tell you, that bitch is fake. <laughs> okay, so. For, I would watch the, that. Alert, the biggest issue with that, Larson, is that you can't call it Vanta Black without paying Anish Kapoor money and fuck that guy. Uh, I don't know who that is. Also, I don't, I, 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 I've got a, a different suggestion. He's the Not one that made the thing. I don't agree with Vanta Black. It should be Shaniqua Black. <laughs> What's that mean about the, the pictures of some porn movie where it has one little pale blonde girl and there's about five big black guys standing behind her on the couch? You know what's coming. Yeah, LV, most of us generally agree with, with what you said there. It's just especially ironic and funny in this specific case. <laughs> yeah. But I did like when yeah. the viewer was like, hold on, you said Ferris. You didn't say no beautiful. Let me tell you, Snow yeah. White bitch is pale. And she's like, all right, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the most beautiful of them all? The Huntsman. What? Oh, yeah, he's dreaming. <laughs> 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 well, hey, he's played by uh, Chris Hemsworth, so yeah, fuck. Oh, shit. Uh, the only other thing, let me think. Uh, we need to do oh, the thing with Aaron Rodgers, who I heard just announced his retirement. After he got in trouble for his anti-vax stance, caught a bunch of flack, <laughs> and I was what? Somebody posted this, and I was going to watch it several times. Aziz Ansari uh, from like Parks and Recreation and all that stuff. He did a stand-up bit on Aaron Rodgers, kind of simultaneously defending and roasting Aaron Rodgers. He's like, "What's everybody so up in arms about?" Well, uh, he read an article, got a little skeptical. Did a little research. Are we surprised he got it wrong? 
Is that so shocking? Are we expecting, you know, Falcon to go, it's like, dude, I just got off the phone with Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> and he said, he's a football player. He makes a living getting hit in the head. Hmm. Professionally getting hit in the head. Uh, Could be a good boxer, too. Uh, he said, yeah, I, I'm with Larson on this one, honestly. Like, it, it, There is a point where that kind of thing matters, and it has nothing to do with any underhanded, background, hidden racism bullshit. There is that this part existed in this way for a yeah. long fucking time. I mean, I, I, I agree as well but, that I, I don't think that I don't. I don't think Daniel Craig looked like a James Bond either. I, like, I think I his mean, acting was fine, but I, I, I didn't seen, look the part. He I've didn't look seen, the part. Like, he acted it fine. Like, I've seen the Casino Royale. Thing. I have only seen Casino Royale and part of uh, Skyfall, so I don't know how he did in the other movies. Uh, which I really should watch. Them. Oh, and one other part. I will say, uh, I've seen the a clip like from uh, Quantum of Solace. So we'll say that one had the best Bond villain death ever. Because we don't even actually see it happen. You know, no big exploding uh, lair or nothing like that. He drives out in the middle of the desert in his car, opens the trunk, dumps the guy out, tosses him a bottle of motor oil and goes, I expect you to get about 10 miles before you consider drinking that. Lose it. Like, fuck! I haven't actually seen any of the, like, the full movies that Daniel Craig was in, but I've seen some clips of them at least, anyway. Yeah, I was, they look like good action good. movies, but I they did just like didn't feel very James Bondy. How they handled Casino Royale because they didn't do all the things you expected uh, from a James Bond movie right off. I mean, they were very sparing with the gadgets and. Uh, Hell, we don't even get two things to expect out of it until the very end of the movie. When uh, confronting one bad guy at the end, and he said, and he himself, Bond, James Bond. And then we get da da da, da da da, as the ending of the movie. Hmm, weird. I know, it was great. More, <laughs> more Jason Bourne than James Bond? Yeah, I would say yeah. that's, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah, there, especially in one part near the beginning, uh, we get a lot of a lot of parkour going on in one spot. Was the parkour hardcore? It was. He was like climbing up some kind of like construction crane shit on it. <laughs> Just running up the thing after the guy. All right, let's see. Uh, Gotta go there. I will say about Jason Bourne, I think they burned that one out with the last one because I went saw it and like. Oh. I only saw the first one. I don't. I, I feel like that that was another time where choice of actor wasn't great. I will say yeah, that was the thing about the character. He was uh, not supposed to be a guy like the guy you think. You know, you have the look. He looks like almost average. And that's the point. Okay. Well, they succeeded then. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, Matt Damon. He did well. But like I said, that last one, I don't think they were even... Will I try fighting an elemental? Um, probably not. It Unless I find one based... lower level than me. <laughs> it wasn't even based on any of the books. They just made something up there. And... Yeah, that's so great. Uh, I've never trick seen... me, LV. I, I, I know elementals are bad news. I never seen the uh, the spin-off when they did the Born Legacy. They had uh, Jeremy Renner in it. No idea who that is. Hawkeye. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um There was another good one if you ever see this uh, called The Accountant had Ben Affleck. It was an interesting one. Affleck. He did really well in this. I think, you know. I can see him doing a really spy movie. That's not what his character. He's not a spy. He's, he's like a forensic accountant, but he's got all these sets of skills here, 
and almost he's got this ability like to just pick up and move wherever. It's like job's done, he disappears and like almost starts a whole nother life with each job. Damn. Yeah, it's a good movie. Uh what's the other one I really like? Uh now here's a movie I suggest you check out. I think it was ninety nine. Ninety nine? Uh, the, it was from 1999, 98, sorry, uh, Ronin stars, uh, Robert De Niro. <laughs> the gators are cute, kind of, before they open their, their face and have another face inside their face. Mm, it's Mojo. Turn into a horror movie monster. Mojo, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> I have told you, I've told Kai, have I told you the story of Mojo? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, so the streamer was telling this story. He had a friend in, in uh, Louisiana. He was like yeah. renting this house, you know, back porch faced onto the water. And one night he's sitting home, and all of a sudden he hears a sound like a low rumble and a hiss combined. He looks out the back window. There's a huge alligator on the back porch. So only got, it's missing an eye. This yeah. massive yeah. scar tissue where one, one of its eyes used to be. And a strange ticking sound like a clock. Uh, he <laughs> bolts out the front door, runs up the hill where the landlord is. He's like, dude, there's this huge freaking alligator in the back porch. He's like, you got one eye? Yeah. Oh, that's Moja. You all right? <laughs> <laughs> Walks back down the hill with the guy. It's all right. He's he cool. Goes, <laughs> Goes around the back porch. He's like, "Oh go, oh go, yeah." <laughs> and here's splish. Yeah, <laughs> Mojo slipped back into the water. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I said to him, "That is the single most from Louisiana story I think I've ever heard." <laughs> yeah. Oh, Sounds Mojo. Like <laughs> Mojo, yeah. All right, here he is. You get stolen from. Dare go to I hunt your ass. I'm being alerted of dinner, so I shall return. Enjoy. Like a mixture of a dinosaur. Yeah, what are the rules? Do, do, does a sword in the knee stop you from being an adventurer as well? Ah, uh, doesn't seem to be stopping him. He's got several. <laughs> it looks like a combination from a dinosaur, a golem, yeah. and a mad cat from Battletech. Yeah, I don't know what the hell it is. It's like, it's like those giant man. lizard things I've seen earlier in the game, but more like rocky. Lizard golem battle man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was one of the things that uh, Razorfist brought this up when he gave kind of a run out. One of his favorite games of all time is uh, Battletech, and of course he played several of the video games based on it. Mm -hmm. One of the great things was the. Uh, expansion game mech warrior which is okay battletech is more the the battle game between your uh, mechs but the mech warrior is like the role playing game, mm -hmm. in which you can play all different types and if you play a mech pilot any stats you accrue in that can then be transferred over to the battletech game Maybe a mech mechanic can do upgrades on a mech and all that yeah, stuff. So yeah, because they're both they're, they're both the same thing. Universe. Just yeah. One of them focuses on the pilot more than the mech. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that's a interesting way to do it. Yeah. You don't get very many games that where you have multiple different games that are linked together like that outside mm -hmm. of like where White Wolf that designs their stuff that way on purpose. Hmm. This is good background music, Larson. I agree. Yep. All right, now we got to go back and get a chocobo so we can get into the mines mm, and uh, fight a ghost. You know, it's a ghost. I almost bought at work today, even when it's still full price. Went in a big heart-shaped boxes of candy, and they were all full of like uh, what do you call them? Turtles, like the Ooh. chocolate. Turtles pecan is one of my favorite candies ever. Chocolates. Right, in a big box full of them. It's like, uh, I forget how much it was. Like, I'd just buy it now, lot. even be even before I bet it was Valentine's expensive. Day. Uh, but that stuff is 30. delicious. 
thirteen dollars or something. Yeah. Hmm. But uh, I'd say I'd buy it full price. I don't give a shit. But I say my favorite. Uh, I said my favorite days of the year are the days after Valentine's, Easter, mm -hmm. and Halloween. As I call it, cheap candy day. True. Also, yes, LV, the, the rain noise is really soothing. Uh. It's very nice. I, I like really good rain sounds in games. I'm happy it rain is rains. Yeah, I, I am. I love rain. I, like, I don't like being caught in the rain without an umbrella or whatever. Like, I don't want to get soaked or anything, but yeah. being around rain without getting drenched by it is really n quite pleasant. Mm -hmm. You remember the song, uh, you remember the group Garbage, right? Uh, not much about them, but I remember that they existed. Uh, well, they had a song called oh I'm Only Happy When It Rains. Yeah, yeah I know that song. It was a very gothy kind of emo song. I also had a big crush on the and I ain't gonna lie. I don't know what she looked like, but she had a nice voice. She was a hot redhead. Mm. I remember they did, they did a... Uh, I don't know if the whole group did or whether it was just her, but uh, did a uh, James Bond theme. Uh, they did a theme to The World Is Not Enough. Ooh! Uh, I'm looking at a picture of her. I'm looking at a picture of her now. She is not aged well. Ooh. Shame. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens with celebrities a lot of the time, though. Uh, not always, God. but often. Uh. What is Shame, my favorite Final older, Fantasy? Um, this is one of my favorite. Mm. I, I don't know if I could really lay down my absolute favorite mm. easily, but uh, I'll give you my top five in no specific order. This one, the first one, four, six, and I think maybe, actually five, maybe. So one, I four, five, six, and this one. I played seven uh, only in before no specific I started order. 14. You played which? I played number seven, and now I play fourteen okay. online. Actually, so seven was it. great too. Um, and it and it was especially the remake. Actually, if if the rest of the remake is going to be like the first part of the remake was, then it might be my favorite. I played the original FF seven, and that's only because this one got a PS two, and I had never played a P, played the first seven, and everybody was like still telling how great it was, and this was. I think this is right before Advent Children. So I'll see, we'll see what it's I need to watch that. Stuff. I've never actually seen that. I've heard mixed reviews. Now, it'd be, it'd be I was, useful just to see it, though, as well, because the remake yeah. keeps that as part of the canon. I'll say a lot of the characters are... Oh, shit. A lot of the stories, you know, will differ from uh, one Final Fantasy game to the next. You know, there'll be a different thing each time. That's why people were always, when they're crapping about that movie, uh, the Spirits Within, and it's like, well, this ain't like any Final Fantasy. And it's like, not many Final Fantasies are like each other, so. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Generally not. Um, let's see, hold on. Uh, mm. Hold on there. License points. I don't know that I really need that. But oh, let's see, amber armor. Uh, sell one of those. Okay, now I can buy all I needed. Okay, I have all of the monographs now except for the last one, which means I'll be getting better loot from almost everything. Very nice. See, Elvin, you, you, your list is interesting because. I'm not a big fan of number eight, but whenever I discuss that with everybody, they seem surprised. Like, everybody seems to have liked eight, except for me. <laughs> Even then, I, I mean, I enjoyed it overall. It's just one of my, it was my least favorite Final Fantasy until 13 came out. <laughs> Installed the title. <laughs> um, there was a bunch of stuff about eight I didn't like. I like the story overall, though. It's, it's mostly game mechanical stuff I didn't like. But I liked... Uh, aside from 8 and 13, I liked pretty much all of them. Really. I'm looking at that. I forget where I got that one. Probably from another uh, Discord link. The one that 
the picture I posted if uh, with Sabaton and Power Wolf going on a tour together. It's like, yeah, that would be exactly what they would do. Mm -hmm. I like Paishan's one with the two cats. It's like, he's behind me. Making a fucking face again. I mean, you had that to was turn really around good. And go. That was really good. Actually, the best thing about that was the, the second comment that made the uh, oh, yeah. nasty faces. <laughs> <Look. laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just to look on one cat's face, like, I turn around with me that damn stupid face he and then the cat behind him is going like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> not quite the one from, not quite the Estonian cat, but, uh, <laughs> but just a look at those face like, I ain't fucking looking. God damn it. <laughs> I can feel it on the back of my head. I liked warped one. I've I have reposted that to several feeds. The mm -hmm. is that him process? It is process like. <laughs> God had no hand in the creation of this abhorrence. <laughs> yep. And, uh, yeah, LV, uh, even though the story is weird, it's Final Fantasy. The story of every Final Fantasy is weird. Yeah, come on. Well, this like, is except for the first few. Like, okay, up until six, the story has mm. made sense. Mm. Seven is when it started to get weird. It stayed weird this ever is, since then. Basically, it set... I don't know if this was the first to do it, but it almost kind of set the standard for the JRPG. I don't know if it was the first JRPG to do it, but it was the first Final Fantasy to do it. Yeah, it kind of like... Yeah, you know, phase 1 dig, that's where I need to get. What was the other line? I was watching somebody's video on that. Uh, that <sighs> Breath of Fire, I think, was the series. Yeah. Or I played Breath of Fire 3, but not the other ones. Yeah, I think the last one they did was, was, pretty good. was a complete departure from the... Like the to, thing um, is... In, Every time sorry, they, you finish up. Go ahead. They mentioned Breath of Fire. For some reason, my mind switches to Fire Emblem, which is a whole different thing. Oh, yeah. that That's a weird thing for your brain to do. <laughs> I don't know. Fire in the title and in the think, yeah. of fantasy video game. I can see uh, it. I, I can see it happening. Yeah. This same thing whenever uh, when Kai would play Dishonored, and somehow my mind would think For Honor, which is a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah, LV, as far as 13 goes, the only... Th that was the worst story out of the series yet. And the worst, the worst characters, the worst dialogue, the worst script. Like, the only good thing I could say good about 13 is that it was very pretty. But everything else about it was trash. It's the only, game I've ever only RPG I've ever played where there was only one character in the party I liked and everybody else I hated. And yet, um, and the person that I like, you don't even get till near the end of the game. Meh. Uh, the game was bad. Yeah. And, and the and the summons transforming into vehicles. What the hell was that? <laughs> they could have at least gone made the little <laughs> noise from transformers or something. <laughs> I'm wondering. That's another thing. Now that uh, apparently uh, Microsoft is bought uh, Activision Blizzard. Mm -hmm. You think there'll be anything different? Will the games improve? Get worse? What? Yeah. Um, I mean, the games have been pretty good for the most part, except for some shitty things that have been happening with the Blizzard remakes, like the mm. Warcraft 3 remake. I think that will improve. It I don't know if we're going to re-remake necessarily, but I think yeah, there's going to be more quality assurance on that. It's I think the like biggest things that are going to improve is conditions for workers. Sexual misconduct within the office. Solution? Take out any sexy paintings in the background. Yeah, that was of funny. the game. Like, what the fuck? And we have to remember, it's going to take at least a year, maybe more, for anything to change. Yeah, once because Bobby Kotick gets his... Because it's... they don't actually own them for at least another year. Once Kotick gets his golden parachute. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> After that, we can start crossing our fingers for change. I mean, like, somebody was mentioning this. It's almost like the... You know in the old uh, Mortal Kombat games where you had like that column of victories you'd go upwards of? Somebody made a thing like that, and there was Bethesda, and then <laughs> Activision Blizzard. I think next we're on the list. They posted on the list... <laughs> uh, Bioware. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's, what's going on with Bioware these days because I think they got forced into making it. Um, they got forced into making uh, what was it called? Anthem. Oh which yeah. Which was not their forte. Yeah, so rushed into things. Doesn't somebody else already own them, and that's why they got forced to make that? Uh, I don't know. Because they wouldn't normally do some do a game like that. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. Some I like Razor Fist made the joke about this. He says, "I uh, said, look to your right, right? Okay, now look to your left. Now do a slow scan, pan, and scan in front of everything in front of you, right? Now take all that stuff and ship it to Microsoft because they probably own it now." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I look less. directly at my computer desk, which is also my uh, art, my art studio, uh, entertainment station, and dining table. <laughs> oh, the two sexy women motorbike? That was Shiva, I think. And I looked and I said, hell no, they ain't getting my slap your mama hot sauce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully things will, will improve. Um... I'm really curious to see what World of Warcraft is going to be like from now on, not because of the Microsoft thing, but because of something else I found out about where some of the weirdness with the story lately has been basically one particular person's uh, revenge as he left the, the company. Like, well, not necessarily a revenge so much. I'm not sure if it's revenge for whatever, but it was basically he had a habit of writing himself, writing the company into a corner with his stories. Yep. The problem was he was the head of the story. <laughs> so anything yeah, he said well. ha had to be obeyed. Mm. But he had a he had the uh, habit of just like pulling something in completely non sequitur out of his ass and running with it and then people had to explain it later. Like sort of like, okay this happened now we have to explain why this happened. What was that one guy at the one convention was talking about some character in the game, a little dwarf character, and whatever happened to that character and such and such, and the guys were kind of looking at us like, what, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then they know. looked like, oh yeah, okay, and they put him back into the lore of the game, and then the guy who brought it up yeah. at the con, they named the character after him. Oh, nice. I like that. Yeah, it's like, all right, somebody's all paying right. attention. Good night, Elvie. Thanks for dropping by. I hope you feel better. Hi, Elvie. It's a ibuprofen. And Snowcat, of course you had to Google their names because I would feel bad for you if you just remembered them. <laughs> oh, this was a joke. I told uh, Kai oh, Before this. you get into that, I just want to say, the thing I was saying about Warcraft and the <laughs> story oh. thing. Um, <laughs> so he has that habit of writing things into a corner, but he's left the company now. Yeah. Uh, and... The the part of this, basically, the the thing he did has affected the last three expansions. Mm -hmm. But they've basically done a thing where they've written it out so that they've wrapped up that part of the story, and now the next expansion can be a totally new thing that doesn't deal with that character anymore. Cool. And therefore, all all these messes that this guy left behind are are, are wrapped up and ready to be left behind. <laughs> So, I'm uh, curious to see where that's going to go. I made a uh, reference. Somebody asked something about the world situation. He asked, Did anyone actually figure out why Russia wants to invade Ukraine? And I just made the joke. Two extra troops at the beginning of each turn. Yeah, <laughs> risk joke. Yay! <laughs> I don't even know if that's correct or not. But <laughs> I like it. Um... Do I remember when somebody asked about the giant snake skeleton? Yeah. Yes, and I, I remember who it is, too. A fellow I watch on YouTube fairly often. Who's very, very good with Warcraft lore. Actually, lore, lore for a lot of things. I don't think, I don't think I've ever explained that thing still. <laughs> That's okay, not everything has to be explained. Okay, um... I thought the guy was... The ghost was supposed to be in here, but maybe he was just through there and he's in here. But yeah, that, Most of the characters in Final Fantasy XIII were just blah. In 
including the the one that was considered to be the main protagonist. That they had a whole game fe featuring to concentrate on her. And I just didn't yeah. care. In fact, Final Fantasy 13 2 and 13 3 are the only times I've just said nah to Final mm. Fantasy games. It's like, nope, I'm done. Right. I'm done with Final Fantasy 13 and its adjacencies. You like Finel's design? Her outfit was nice. But but personality-wise, I hated her the most. She was incredibly irritating. I liked her friend Fang, though. She was the only 100% good and likable Fang. character on the team. Fang. She was cool. She was like this staff-fighting Australian badass lady. Unfortunately, she was best friends with Vanille, the worst character in the game. Yes, yeah, her girlfriend. As as is often shipped. Although I'd like to think that Feng has better taste than that. When are we getting a spin-off game about Fran? That's the, that's the question, isn't it? That's what we all need to know. I would, I would play the hell out of that. Mm. You'd have to have both here too. It could be those two as doing sky pirate things <laughs> on their own. Mm. Mm. You despised Hope. The funny thing is, Hope was the was the one character that a lot of people hated, and I was only kind of mild feeling about. Like, I didn't really like him. And he was overly bitchy and whiny about things, but he didn't bother me as much as he bothered other people. But then again, also, a lot of people hated he did the character called Snow. I thought he was okay. Not great, but okay. Actually, what do we have? Let's, let's got to protect on everybody here. Things are gonna get nasty in here in a second, at least temporarily. Oops. I'm looking through my old Facebook posts. This God, this was back in November. It said Danny Glover was just 41 when he decided he was getting too old for this shit. Let that sink <laughs> in. <laughs> it's like I'm older than that now. Oh God. So I was so I was too old for this shit five years ago. Got it. I, I was like telling him. I was like, you know, you laugh at that until you rely until you think you become Danny Glover. It's like I am too old for this shit. Yeah. I don't remember Ezel from the. Yeah. I don't. I, don't I, I remember barely anything about Tactics Advance, honestly. It's been a long time. I remember they did that weird thing where every job had one specific weapon they used. And you learned abilities by swapping weapons. Yeah. I'm not sure how big of a fan I was of that. I like the job point system that t the first tactics did. I still like the I'm game looking, overall, though. I'm looking at this cartoon, and uh, okay, we've got a little nativity scene. You got the wise men, the cow on the side, baby Jesus in the center, and two zombies off to the side. And he's like, Chuck, that's just wrong. Hey. Not my fault when stores start selling Christmas stuff in October. They gotta expect a few zombies in a manger. Well, I mean, of course there's zombies involved with that because Jesus is the Easter zombie. <laughs> and the other guy, aim for the heads, baby Jesus! <laughs> Friend Fang duo? That would be just confusing. Because they're, they're not even from the same world. It would have to be Paul Thier, friend, because they're already a couple. It's like, oh, it's, it's, it's canon that they're dating. It would make sense for them to be adventuring together. I took one of these little online, uh, one BuzzFeed, the thing is, another quiz, like, which classic TV millionaire are you? I got Go Vance Adams. Nice. <laughs> 
nice. Yeah. You ever play that uh, old uh, NES game, Fester's Quest? Oh yeah, I had it, and uh, the game was weird. <laughs> yeah, it was better to play it if you had the NES Advantage, which I did. Uh huh. So did I, because then Still you have the auto fire on there. Yeah, it was basically the indoor portions from Blaster Master, is what that game was. Uh, Hold on, do I have uh, directions on this quest? Because this guy is not showing up. Is this phase one shaft? Oh, maybe he's in a hidden area. Oh, I think I have to go back and hit that switch again, though, I think. Yeah, I can't get back directly. I think everyone can agree that if you played Final Fantasy XII, you had either a crush on Fran, Balthier, or both. Yes. No. That is, I believe that to be a true statement. I think uh, Princess Ash looks very nice, but not a big fan of her personality. Then again, her husband was murdered and her country was conquered, so I'd be cranky too. Can't not cannot entirely blame her. <laughs> Calling your younger self out for what, Snow? For having good taste? Hmm. Then again, I'm not much mm. of a personnel, not a big fan of uh, <laughs> trans personality, or at least I, I would not find it attractive. <laughs> she definitely looks nice, and, and her voice is absolutely silk. I feel like the representations in Revenant Wings were very different than they are here, though. Like, that's a side game that... Is it even canon? Mm. I wonder. If it is, it takes place after this game, clearly, but... Still, I just, I just find it fun that the weird stuff going on with the Final Fantasy VII Remake because of the fact that... Advent Children happens after Final Fantasy VII, but before Final Fantasy VII Remake. Because of the weird stuff going on in that story. Still, I just love the fact that, uh... There's a big change they can do in the story now because of what they've set up. And it's something people have have been clamoring for for decades. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how they're going to handle it. They have to go for it. Because there's something that pretty much everybody on the planet was very sad about that happened in the original Final Fantasy VII. And they can avoid it now. No. <laughs> oh god, you drink? I don't. I'm gonna ask you this: You ever drank any hard seltzers? Uh, I don't think so. I tried it once. I was like, eh. I don't see what the excitement's about. I will say this: I don't know if you're old enough to remember Zima or not. Why? I was already an adult when Zima was out. <laughs> uh, well, you remember that? Okay. Never tried that's it. What, that's how I see hard seltzer is Zima all over again. I don't I know mean, what hard seltzer is. It's, You're talking seltzer water? It's basically it's carbon. 
Yeah. I don't know exactly what hard seltzer is supposed to be. I mean, I know seltzer is like carbonated water with flavor. Flavoring right. that this is carbonated uh, case, alcohol. Alcohol, yeah. Oh, the, Larson, they better not. They don't have. The thing is, they don't have to knock out anybody of the characters this time around. To me, it's just a step away from uh, from uh, four loco. <laughs> If, if they kill off Tifa this time around, the Italian Senate will be very sad. Yep. In the simplest terms, hard seltzer is alcoholic bubbly water. The overwhelming majority of options contain some form of natural fruit flavoring and arrive at around 5% alcohol by volume. Okay. I mean, I'm the guy, like, in college, when I was, like, dead broke and wanted to buzz, I have drunk malt liquor. And I can tell you, not much of a huge difference in taste. Larson, you're a bad person. I cannot condone your, your sick imagination, yeah. sir. <laughs> what? Uh, now here you go, they kill Tifa and Aerith, and now Yuffie becomes a love interest. Oh god. That's one way to destroy your company. Hi, Evo. Pretty much, Bernsey, pretty much. I remember uh, watching Zero Punctuation, at one point he was talking about, at, at least during one particular era anyway, Every Final Fantasy game had um, a character he referred to as the moon unit of the game. Like this one absolute mm. lunatic, unhinged character. Yeah. And, uh, see, so like, Vanille was the one for 13, and Yuffie was the one for 7. <laughs> I will fact, say, I think, seven uh, is, I think 7 is when that trend started. Like, there's always a character in the team, usually female, who's just an absolute weirdo. Yeah. Like, just. Annoying and flighty and confusing and strange. Well, Snow, it's a Japanese game, you know. I mean, it took them until, what was it, 2001 to raise the age of consent from 12. Yeah. <laughs> As somebody posted in that, Congratulations, Japan. Welcome to the 20th century. Too bad it's the 21st. <laughs> yeah. You're closing that gap, though. Maybe in another hundred uh, years, you'll you'll get there. Then again, how old are the other characters in this game? They don't really say. I, I mean, they never 100% specify, really. They don't need to, generally. I always thought in, in 7, Yuffie was more like 16 or 17, but that's still underage, too. Not by their standards, but by our standards. Have you ever watched, uh, what was it? Oh, God. Oh, and yes, you could, you, could, you could bring Barrett on a date into the Golden Saucer. Uh, Team Four Stars uh, thing, uh, Final Fantasy VII Machine Abridged. Machine Abridged? That's how, what they called it, Machine Abridged. That's a weird name. I know, but it's basically their, like their abridged series, like they did with uh, Dragon Ball Yeah, I just Ball don't know Z. why they threw in the word machine. Uh, who knows? But no, I have not seen it. Making fun of Machinima? I don't know. <laughs> oh wait, was it was Machina Bridge one word? Yeah. Okay, so it's Machinima Bridged. Then. I guess. That's totally what it, what what they're doing there. Anyways, uh Hell's Cloud? I I think it is twenties. Cloud and Tifa are the are roughly the same age. It was kind of sad that they ended that series, but Mid I guess 20s. end it Lord before it Sorry. before people burn out on it. Kind of like how the guy who ended uh, the Emperor had a text-to-speech device. Of course, he had to end it because he could see the writing on the wall as far as Games Workshop was concerned. Oh yeah, he, get out while you uh, while you still can. Yeah. That was a funny series. And the thing is, 
What about it is, it was completely Harriet hilarious, but at the same time, was faithful to the lore. So, yeah, we're making fun of it, but we're actually telling you what's actually yeah. what's, what's actually going on yeah. in the game. Speaking of uh, Warhammer, did you po see the posting I did of uh, the the AI animated picture of uh, Robot Gilliman dancing? No, where's that? Somebody took a portrait of Robot Gilliman and uh, got an AI to animate it dancing to the song "I'm Blue." Where is that? Which one? Which? Uh, it's, it's, it's it's in uh, Tenkai's memes and shit posting from like oh, two okay. three days ago. Oh, wow. Well, uh, it's really well animated, plus I'm Blue is such a good song for uh, Gilliman. <laughs> uh, oh god, I remember when that thing was around. It was like, you know, this one person seen all the time. I said, not stop! <laughs> oh, there's the one I posted. <laughs> Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Come have an ice cream. <laughs> yeah? Why does the world need to have a purpose? It just is. Oh, here it is. If he was Robot. 16? Okay. Robot girly man. Still very annoying, though. Ah, uh, give much for Robot girly man. Yeah. It's a good portrait of him, though. I really like that uh. look for him. My two favorite, my man, my other guy, that fellow, are Lionel Johnson or Jagatai Khan. Jagatai Khan's a badass. Hell yeah. But of course he is, because he's basically um, Attila the Hun. Right. <laughs> uh, Lionel except, Johnson. Except a good guy. Lionel Johnson, guy who knocked, the, who knocked, uh, Lehman Ruth cold out. <laughs> For laughing at him. <laughs> well, he wasn't laughing at him. He was laughing at the situation. He thought he was laughing at him. Was, uh, oh, is that right? Ah! All right. Let me see. How do I find this friend? You have seen Russian Badger's uh, video on uh, uh, Space Hulk Death Deathwing. Oh, that's a great one. When the, one of the guy that knows the lore said, Lionel Johnson is a prime mark of the Dark Angels. The reason he's not right here, he is literally just asleep. I mean, if you want to be pedantic, he's in stasis, but... Oh, he's, he's there in that spot that I... Okay, he's there in this middle place. Okay, um... But that video is the home of the great line, Brother, get the flamer. The heavy flamer. Ah, that's a famous line. Oh, yeah. Oh. Overused on things that don't deserve it these days, but... But, you know, yeah, but it... For you. That's about as like when somebody makes some joke about something going on in... Uh... 40k, I'll always use the meme of the heresy detected alert going up. Ah. Spice, spicy hot take from Larson. Space Marines and their Primarchs are overrated and for normies. Alright, what do you mm. prefer, Larson? <laughs> what will you, uh, ha. replace that with instead? I mean, I would say, in the in the general nerdy fandoms, there are there are more on the normie side than like true deep geekery, I suppose. Although I would say, uh, when it comes both to mech games and to miniatures gaming in general, I'm not a big fan of 40k miniatures stuff, but I like. Now, have you heard of this game called War Machine? Alright, cool. Last, can you hear me? Yeah. Did you hear uh, Sounds familiar. Did I just hear a snow? Yes, you did. Hello, how were the shrimp tacos? 
They were good. Oh yeah, that yes. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, yeah I, I like War Machine. I think the game mechanics are a lot better than than Warhammer, and I like the story to it. It's it's a weird setting. I like it. The other stuff does get a lot of screen time, Lars. What are you talking about? I guess the Elder don't get as much screen time, maybe. Or at least fans don't talk about it as much. It's not necessarily one of the favorite factions for most people. I will say one thing about... Uh... What are they? They had a... I think the latest release I read about from Games Workshop, and I don't normally play LR, but I would get those just to put them together and paint them. They have a new uh, Dark Reapers uh, box set. I think it comes like four Dark Reapers and an Exarch. And like Dark Reapers are like the heavy, like the heavy weapons, specialty troops of the LR. Ooh, an interesting 40k video game with survival horror about an Eldar, Pathfinder, or Ranger traveling to a crone world. That would be pretty cool. I would play that. I'm, I'm still waiting for, uh, Darktide. Yeah, you know what else would be cool? Um, a game where you're playing a, uh, an Inquisitor going about, like, investigations and, and arrests and such, but technically we already had a, a 40 game called Inquisitor, but it wasn't really like that. Like, it was... Yeah, I don't think it was handled very well, from what I've heard. Like having, like, a proper investigation... Like, like imagine something like, um... Like those Cthulhu games or something. But instead of investigating Cthulhu cults, you're investigating, like, Chaos cults in 40k. There's a sale on Steam right now. Yep. A lot of these things are, like, way low in price. An underground gene stealer cult. I mean, like, that's some, as, like, a management game of some sort would be interesting. Still waiting on when is this thing? It just says 2022, nothing more. I want Doom Spice Wars. That looks like a game. I don't know what's coming out. Is that the new RTS or? Yeah. I don't know how. I don't know. I haven't seen anything about how it's going to play, but I'm very interested to find out. Yeah. Bio Mutants only 30 bucks right now. Ooh. I played that. It's pretty fun. It's got some some very silly storytelling. Yeah. And some very good goofs. Like you get to have one of those situations where you've got a post-apocalyptic society, and they don't know what people used to call things, so they have to come up yeah. with their own names for things. Oh yeah. Like they call trains chugga chuggas. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yep. And I think, uh, what was it? Uh, the pianos are called plink plonks. <laughs> <laughs> All that kind of stuff. It's, it's amusing. Yeah. Gameplay is so-so, but it's the it's the setting and dialogue and stuff that's fun about that game. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Actually, that Gene Sealer cult game could be could be interesting. It could. You guys ever play this old game called? Um, actually, shit. What was it? I don't remember yeah. what the original name of that game was. Fuck. Anyway, um, there was this older game. It got a more recent, essentially a remake called Satellite Rain. But it was essentially a remake of an older game that was called something else that I can't remember the name of right now. But you, ha you had like these special like, cyborg agents that you would go around and you'd hack things and you'd use sometimes um, 
yeah. take over other people. The original game had this device called, yeah. um... I can't even remember the name of the device it was now, but you can use it to take over people's minds nearby. I remember, I remember there being one game, one level where there was a parade. And you could like walk down the street in the middle of the parade and, and you were within range of everybody on the sides of the street so you could just assemble an army. Mm -hmm. God, I wish I remember what it was called. But the, the remake was called Satellite Rain. And I feel like the Gene Sealer Cult game could work like that game does. Yeah. Syndicate, yes, thank you, Larson. That's the game. And the device was called the Persuader Tron, I remember now. The new game didn't have the Persuader Tron, but you could directly hack people's brains still. So, a Gene Stiller called game could work using, like, a Syndicate like engine, I think. That could be interesting. Satellite Rain's a very fun game, by the way. Anybody who hasn't tried it, I recommend it. Wait, how do I do the switch thing in here if I can't... How do I get back there? I need to get into this room where this switch is. Oh, wait, there's a switch right in there? Oh, jeez. I'm blind. Okay. Devil May Cry Eldar Harlequin Edition? That'd be weird. I wonder what happened to that Devil May Cry uh, series that Netflix was planning. I'm raising a pretty big eyebrow at that. I, I, it was going to be made by the uh, same people... It was going to be made by the same people who made that Castlevania series, and that... Thing. Okay. I was going to say there's a lot of potential to fuck it up, but yeah. those people did a good job with Castlevania, so... Hell yeah. So, yeah. I will say, for every one good idea, we get ten pieces of crap. There's supposed to be... And Netflix, how about something that was going to just milk something to death? They got another Master of the Universe. It's going to be a live-action one. Why? Exactly. Oh yeah, and Netflix Cowboy Bebop that died fast. <laughs> Thankfully, I knew that. I knew that was gonna fail. Although it looked uh, like they had potential when it came yeah. out. But still, it just. I don't know. And apparently, who's this guy's name? Uh, somebody posted. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Given the name of the guy, damn it! Where is it? Kyle Allen will be playing He-Man. I don't know who he is. Exactly. That's why I posted. I want to repost it. It says, "And Master of the Universe fans, everyone <laughs> uttered a collective who." <laughs> oh, you know who? They, what if they'd gotten Dolph Lundgren? Uh, he's a little bit old. Uh, uh, he was in that fucking. West Side Story is. movie this year, the one that bombed. Uh, written by, by co-written by the guy behind Shang Chi and Wonder Woman 1984. Oh, Jesus, fuck, man! People don't seem to like that one. I haven't seen you it. Guys, yeah, yeah. You guys want it to fail right out of the fucking gate, don't you? I mean, I know there's a particular scene that people hated from that movie, but was it okay aside from that, or was it so bad? I uh, have not seen it. Didn't care to. I mean, I asked, you know, they got two great, besides Wonder Woman, you got two other, you know, great uh, DC characters, and they said, oh, they they didn't handle them well either. It's like, well, fuck it. Because, it, interesting thing, that Kirsten Wig, you know, the... Woman behind Bridesmaids and the 2016 Ghostbusters, Saturday Night Live alumnus, playing uh, the part of Cheetah, of all people. DC does not seem to be having a good time over the last decade, do they? I will say this, I was one of the rare ones that actually didn't have a problem 
with Batman v Superman or the Justice League, the like the Joss Whedon cut of Justice League. Have not seen the Skyder Snyder cut. I don't know if I can. I haven't take seen any uh, any of those Justice Leagues at all because I just didn't care. It was a good superhero movie, and like especially in the big battle in the end between like the Justice League and the forces of Apocalypse era. It's like, holy shit, this looks good. <laughs> also, I never I never liked Apocalypse much. I don't know. I will say, uh, I, I think Van Fleck did it have good, uh. I thought he was alright as Batman. Gal Gadot been great as Wonder Woman. Jason oh, yeah. Momoa. She was, being she was too skinny to, to be Wonder Woman, but other than that, she did a good job. Well, have you seen Wonder Woman through the ages? You know, that's the thing. It's not about the size of her. She's well, just no, but you think you think a warrior woman would not be a, uh, a little straw stick, you know? Uh, Jason Momoa, even though his character is like Loved little him. or nothing like the classic Aquaman, he was great. Nobody cared if, if, if you're he was gonna, like the Aquaman. If you're gonna change the race of a character, I feel like Aquaman as a Polynesian yeah. makes sense. <laughs> I even like Ezra yeah. Miller as the Flash. Something about that character, the innocence of the character worked for me. I'm still not happy about Cyborg being in there and Green Lantern not being considered. I mean, discounting, you know, the Ryan Reynolds movie. Which one? Green Lantern. Oh, yeah, I didn't bother with that. Uh, I could have changed it. Hell, I want to forget Hal Jordan, I make him the John Stewart Green Lantern. I don't mind. But I'm Cyborg not too much into Green Lantern in general. Although I Cyborg, like the idea of, of his powers, but once yeah, you get into the Cyborg, Lantern core and flying through space and uh, doing all this uh, other stuff, I'd lose interest. Cyborg was a Teen Titan. Always was, always will be. Uh, that was a, and that was the weird thing about that. Now, this is one thing I will give to the uh, DC Universe, which is now part of H it, HBO Max. The way they integrated like the Titans and Doom Patrol, because there was a crossover. It established that Beast Boy was a former member of the Doom Patrol before dying, joining the Titans. That is where they made Cyborg a member of the Doom Patrol when he never was, but oh well. Yeah, and Burnswell, yes, the Ryan Reynolds movie that Deadpool went back in time to prevent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a good goof. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, quick break, everybody. Okay. Uh, Go have a little puppy. Be right back. Uh, yep. Need some food. It's time for second dinner. <laughs> I will say, that stir-fry I made turned out pretty good. If it was just... Well, it was a shrimp and celery, because that's all the veggies I had in the house right now. No. Sometimes you gotta make do with what you got, Larson.
Okay. Right, so you're gonna be more than you're gonna need more than just a stick of celery for that chicken stock, buddy. <laughs> Don't forget mm -hmm. the carrots and onions. Kima? Hang on. What is Kima? What? I'm reading what I said there. Ground meat. Mince or oh. mince, mince, mince. I have this weird thing for this happens on both YouTube and Twitch. Where the mm. the chat seems to show up a couple seconds for other people sooner than me. Mm. Like when you asked what is Kima, that message hadn't appeared on my screen yet. Mm. I like <clears throat> somebody used to make fun of the name of the uh, anime series Ruroni Ru Ru Kenshin. Mm -hmm. He call it macaroni kimchi. And be I a weird combination ugh. of foods. Pickled, pickled cabbage, pickled macaroni. I yeah, I don't know how that would mix with macaroni, but I li I like kimchi. There's actually a Korean restaurant downtown here. I don't know if they're still doing it, but I know bef before. Well, I don't see the why they wouldn't be. I just Reminds me still of open, the... I guess. But the thing is, before yeah. Um, before COVID started and I was still working downtown, I would eat there once in a while and they were, they would sell you a, a bucket of kimchi to take home. I remember. I never actually did it, but I, I, but I had kimchi with their food that they were serving. It was really good. I was thinking of, uh, kimchi always reminds me of the great bits of an episode of MASH. So Frank had thought he'd spotted some of the Korean locals planting what he thinks is a bomb in a field. He has the bombs. <laughs> Squad in it's there, a flavor the bomb. Creatures. They find it, oh, and they yeah, all cover it. That. And it's a iron pot. Uh, of course, BJ and Hawkeye are there, and Hawkeye opens it up, and it's a kimchi pot, Frank. Kimchi, Frank! He explains, like, pickled cabbage that they ferment in the ground. There's like dozens of pots all over this field. <laughs> and BJ goes, oh, Frank, you better get claim to this land before word gets up. That? <laughs> Don't you understand, man? You struck coleslaw. I loved uh, Hawkeye's raw sarcasm. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was Alan Alda's birthday yesterday. Also, I always found it was really strange to have a show that was a comedy, but the theme song was so incredibly sad. Yeah. Not that they play the lyrics usually during the theme song, but when you find out what the lyrics are, you're like, oh man. Yeah. If you ever saw the movie, holy god. I don't think I did. 
Yeah, it came out a couple of years before. Totally different cast. The only member, the only cast member of the movie that made it over into the series was Gary Berghoff as Radar. Everybody else totally different. They had a lot of good actors in that show. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, that is correct, Burnswell. And that was part of the lyrics as well. Yep. The part that goes do 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 that's them saying suicide is painless. He wasn't so much psychic oh, as he could uh, he could predict things before they happen and sort of like he Yeah, because he's psychic. Much, not so much psychic as just observant. He's like, okay, we're gonna need this, this, and this. Now. I think he also had incredibly good hearing. Right, because he could hear the choppers coming before anybody else could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wasn't he also supposed to be like a teenager or something? Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. I think the he... actor was too at the time during the TV show. I don't know. Uh, I don't know why he was in the uh -huh. army though. Or at least he looked I mean... like he was. It doesn't necessarily mean he was, but he looked uh, part. Yeah. Hey, Jake. Jake. Hello. How's it going, Jake? Hello, Jake. I still need to set up a bot to announce shoutouts and whatever. Mm. What were you playing, Jake? A bot, or a com I don't know if there's an automatic way to automate that, or I don't know if I have the shadow command set up. Mm. I don't know how to do that. I'll have to figure it out. Astroneer and World Box. How far did you get in Astroneer? I've played that, but after a while, I just got too bored. But I was playing it alone, so that probably didn't help. I it's like it's probably it better with co-op. I guess he was a teenager since uh, in that episode where he was accused of stealing or just yeah. losing his one general's prized gun, he was facing prison time, and he made the statement, I'll go in my puberty and won't come out to my adultery. Wow. I didn't think he was that <laughs> young. <laughs> yeah. Well... He was kind of drunk when he made that statement. <laughs> he was kind of drunk and clean. How many of those beers you had? One. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Our boy's a lightweight. Yeah, and then, well, he drank mostly great knee high. Soon tight. And then when he uh, faced the general of that, uh, he got his bear, teddy bear in hand. What do you need an old gun like that for? And I said, You're a drunk soldier. <laughs> Doing his job, like, Yeah, better believe it, Master. Or I'm dead where you stand. Points over the bear, you hear a gunshot go off. My bear went off! <laughs> no, it was Frank, the one who had actually made off of the gun, trying to put it back and shot himself in the foot. jeez. Oh, <laughs> Oh, great. Well, he was the classic screw up of the show, so. Oh, God, yeah. The bumbling idiot character. Yeah. And then at the end, where he's kind of limping, it says, hey, tell him how to treat, treat gunshot ones. What are you implying? Oh, nothing. Just a shot in the dark. Mm. <laughs> they had a way with words in that show. Probably, uh,. Hawkeye and Trapper and later BJ will probably wouldn't get him so hard if he didn't completely bring it on himself. I went the wrong way. When they had that uh, army psychologist in there assessing everybody and to about how people crack under pressure and frankly, I am not cr this war hasn't cracked me and Hawkeye goes, yeah, he arrived cracked. With a Bible yeah. in one hand with a Bible in one hand <laughs> and a pair of shorts that said hold me in the other. <laughs> These. Uh, so many good wisecracks. Oh, yeah. Hawkeye was definitely the best character. Oh, yeah. Easily. I would say that, yeah. uh, shoot. Of all the people who started from the very beginning, the only ones lasted all the way through were him and Margaret. Oh, yeah? Usually my my two favorite characters from the whole series. I think that's true, actually. Yeah. Uh, Klinger didn't come in till like, a few episodes into the first season. I mean, that's close enough, though, really. And 
same for Father Mulcahy. And then everybody else left the show before it finished. The original cast. Too bad, really. Yep. I feel like one of my episode, favorite episodes is where Henry made Hawkeye Chief Surgeon, of course, much to Frank's disapproval, of course, tried to get a hold of this one top brass general to kind of have a look. And I love the guy, the general, trying to find Henry at first. He sees the other doctors in the middle of a poker game and try to complain to Henry. And when he's looking all over the camp, at one point he walks into this tent. There's a... Oh, God, I can't use the name now because that's considered racial, sir. Jones, the one... And he's there with a the nurse. She's in her robe. He's got his shirt half off. What's going on here? She's playing. I can see that, but what? He holds up a tile. Strip dominoes. <laughs> he looks at the nurse. Nurse, is everyone around here crazy? She goes, everyone who's everyone who's sane is, sir. Yeah. You'd have to be cracked in the first place not to be changed by that place. Yeah. Uh, God damn it, Balthier, now is not time for a nap. <laughs> yeah. well, he's decided it's time for a nap. Because he can catch up to us later then. Luckily, we're in a low-level zone. Combat's kind of a joke here right now, so we'll... Yeah. Fine, we don't even need him anyway. If this was PUBG, you could revive him. All right, Lawson, have yourself a good sleep. Then again, if it was PUBG, it would probably be running at 70, 70 dick rate. <laughs> oh, jeez. Night, night, Larson. Get some good rest. Good night, Larson. <laughs> Hope to see you on Monday, sir. We got more factorizing to do. I was watching a Soviet Wumble video when some guy jumping around. I was like, what are you doing? I'm practicing for the next Assassin's Creed game. It says, what? You gonna badly render run at 14 frames a second? I mean, that was only Unity when it first came out. That's not. <laughs> I know. Hey, sometimes there are things. I mean, it was so it was bad enough that it continues to still er, yeah. it deserves to continue to be mocked. But yeah. this is the one that took place in France, so it's to, to be expected it would have problems. Yeah, I don't know if you were around there when we and Kai were discussing what could be a good setting for Assassins, another Assassins right. Creed. She said World War II, which <laughs> I can agree with. Yeah, well, they dipped into World War One very briefly at one point. I would say put it in Japan, either late Tokugawa or Meiji period. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like assassins would just be like too much, just like the native ninjas at that point. Well, that's the thing, you know. I have them with, with the ninjas in that one, and then you've got the uh, the what are the Templars, you know, with the arriving Europeans. I mean, it could work. <laughs> Plus, I think most of the most of the settings I think I would suggest have already been done at this point. Yeah, I, I quite liked the uh, the Egyptian one. <laughs> what was that one that was? I, I don't know why that made me think. If somebody was talking about there was a, and I don't even know where it's from. And people use this clip when basically trying to run the world through keeping people drunk is like, oh my god, you're the uh, inebriati. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we I like prefer it. the the Knight's Tipler. Oh, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. That's clever. Mm -hmm.
I don't know why I th oh going back that yeah. made me think I don't know, thinking again about Aziz I'm sorry talking about Aaron Rodgers and he says, you know, they don't think like we do. They're on a whole other algorithm, you know. Him, Nicki Minaj, Joe Rogan. You need to go look around, look at some of the places they go, look at some of the stuff effects they get. Don't go too hard though. <laughs> You'd be they a should weekend. turn the bandaid off and set one in the far future. But then you, they wouldn't get... Then they can't do the entire point of the game series, which is the use of the anima. Oh, it's yeah. all about experiencing the past. Anima? I know oh something. Oh my gosh, it's a Luca! Hey! Oh my god. Anima Luca. Uh, anima with an A. We're not talking about uh, people's butts. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> oh no. Do you not, have you not played Assassin's Creed at all, Burn or uh, Blast? I have not. I uh. They, the whole the whole point of the game is that they have a machine that lets them uh, experience people's uh, genetic memories. Like you get somebody's DNA sample, ah, and you can uh, you can use it to experience the memories of any one of their ancestors because in their in their story. Memories are stored in DNA and are passed down by in generations. Yeah. Not that you will directly experience your ancestors' memories normally, but they made a machine that can dig them out. Cool. So they have this machine called an anima, A N I M A. Right. Sorry, animus. My mistake. Animus. And it ah, allowed, okay. originally in the first three games, I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, it had to be the person experiencing their own ancestors directly. Yeah. But then later they, they came up with a breakthrough that allowed them to take any DNA sample and have anybody experience the memories of the ancestors of whoever the, or even the memories of the person themselves yeah. that the DNA sample came from. So like you find like you know like an ancient yeah. mummy or something and you can get some DNA out of it. You can now oh, experience wow. that person's memories or their ancestors' memories, no matter who you are. And that's yeah. been the whole that's been the point of the whole setting. The whole game. Okay. Series. So it would have to still be something in the past. Yeah. Although they do sometimes dip into their current day as well. No. Like sometimes the, you'll have the person that's experiencing the memories get out of the machine and, and do some stuff in their time. But usually again, like eighty percent of the game is the memories that part. I was like you know, saying some of the far future is like gonna say this ain't an eighties horror movie franchise where they inevitably end up in the in space. <laughs> hey. Uh was it Jason did it, Hellraiser did it, Leprechaun did it, eventually they're gonna end up in space. Yeah. Although it would be interesting to see them maybe do like one side game yeah. where they're like, okay. Now we're a hundred years in the future, and we're not doing the Animus anymore. We're just dealing with what's going on with us now. See the future. It would be weird, though. I could see the future. <laughs> Damn it, Luca! How do you do that? I'll be able to see five seconds into the future, five <laughs> seconds from now. That was one of the funniest bits in that series. <laughs> like, oh, I can see the future. Scanning. Scanning. Analyze. Why stop you from destroying they, the race? They are psychic. They are psychic. They can see the future! <laughs> and said, so, I stop you from destroying the race. In the future, we, we just did. How do you do that? <laughs> Go on to feed Sally, and then he does an amount of crap. <laughs> I'm on fire! What the hell are you guys talking about? Uh, uh Dragon Ball Z embraced. Yeah, uh, of course. You're being weird. Well, yeah, but I wanted details. Go or at least strong as well, but he didn't do crap. To know what no, it was. Go on. Go on, sorry. One thing I thought you was know? interesting, though, with the Assassin's Creed series is the first few ones where they were always going through the user of the machines. Uh, ancestors is the they they did little things where they would connect uh, the ancestors away like the first game you are playing this guy in the Middle East I forget specifically which country uh, but then after that you're playing uh, a guy in Italy but then they came out with a, a side game that took place between those two games that explained 
you know, how that line of ancestry happened. Like, okay, so this guy from the Middle East ended up getting together with an Italian woman who then went back to Italy. And now, therefore, we have this other ancestor who's in Italy. So it was nice that they connected the dots a little bit like that. That's kind of cool. Then they've gone into the Fire Pass with the most recent set of games, where they went back uh, with Assassin's Creed Origins, explaining the origins of the Assassin's Brotherhood. <coughs> how, the, how the group was formed in the first place. I was watching. And that was, was the Egyptian uh, game. Someone was talking about some game, I can't remember the name of it now, where it was supposed to be. Or one of our main protagonists was Native American, and somebody was like, Oh, you can't do that, it's disrespectful. And it's like, What? By actually having a Native American protagonist? Yeah, and I love not? the guy. The guy talking about it, uh, this is on it's a gun. I think he's got Native American blood. He always makes jokes about it. So, but he said that, uh, said, come on, the last time we got any representation was in the you know, Assassin's Creed 3. Pretty good game in general, but the, the, the protagonist was incredibly boring. Because uh, that was the one, what was it, something about... I think he was telling his friend, who's like, he's part Asian, and he's like, hey, you, your fault for not using your Asian power to get chicks. And he said, oh, yeah? Well, where's your casino? And I said, I'm not from a good tribe with a casino. I wouldn't be fucking around with you if I was. <laughs> also, Burns, well, what, what good, do, if it doesn't affect their future world, what good did all that looking back in time do? Two things. Mostly it was for information gathering to find ancient relics that those people interacted with. Also, it uh, allowed the person looking back in time to develop and hone their assassin skills because they would, the longer they spend, because they're not just looking back at the memories, they're also playing out a simulation of their life. So it's like they are that person for a while and the, the longer they spend doing it, the more in sync they come with that person and they start to learn their skills. Huh? <laughs> okay. <What? laughs> Okay, so this person on Twitter, I know that's who the Twitter is, posted a thing talking about criticism and then, like, I'm never, like, she basically said, like, I'm never going to post negative feedback on somebody. We're all writers. We're all talented. You know, let's just chillax and whatnot. And I simply said to them, like, if you never get negative feedback, you'll never improve. There's ob objectivity and criticism. No one wants to meet for it. critique with no valid points. Yeah. That's true. But this kind of logic would create echo chambers and it'd be an illusion because authors wouldn't know if they're good or not. Uh, and this is like saying YouTube hiding the dislikes of videos was a good thing. I do agree that if you like something, go for it, regardless of what people say or think. But if you but you will get negative feedback regardless if the book is good or not. So it says the tweet uh, no longer exists. I'm like, did they block me? No, they should have deleted their Twitter account. <laughs> or so, sometimes people will delete the will delete their tweet specifically as well, but it looks like the whole, whole account's gone. That's crazy. Yeah. And, and Burns yeah. well know the elite assassin skills they never use, they definitely do use them. You just you don't yeah. usually play that part out. It's, so it's usually off camera, but they do use it. Yeah, it should have said they're, this they're, account. They're still, they're still fighting the Templars even in the modern day. That Otherwise, so they wouldn't fun. need to do any of this stuff. And then, of course, there's the one game where you play the character who becomes a Templar. I don't, I don't think they handled it very well, though. <laughs> Tom, I saw on Twitter. Somebody put, if they are desexualizing the green M&M, it's only a matter of time before they remove the dick vein from Snickers. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> um, a friend of mine posted that in there. It's funny because uh, it's true. <laughs> oh, please. Well, we're losing hey, blast. Hey, she's back. Can I hear something about a dick vein? On Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Did, did you actually oh. not catch the whole thing, Kai? Yeah. I did not catch the whole thing. I was putting my headphones on and getting ready to get into the thing and because I have the stream running. Nice. I'm pretty sure I heard stick tape. Can we get that whole are, quote again, please? If they are desexualizing the green M&M, &M, 
It's all a matter of time before they remove the dick vein from stars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Oh, you've seen the way the chocolate is kind Never of poured over Snickers. I've had a vein. Snickers. One rivulet. Oh my big. god! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I hate it. You cannot see it now, Ken. Here, here's. <laughs> Thank you, Blast, for ruining one of my favorite candy bars. Now here's the here's the big question. Aww. Upon upon hearing this. Which people will be less likely to continue to eat Snickers, and which people will be more likely? Likely <laughs> <laughs> now. Well, he's taking forever on that to eat that Snickers. Let me tell you. <laughs> the good thing here for me is that unlike Snow, I'm not missing out on anything because I fucking hate well, Snickers. Uh, uh, apparently, a bunch of people it's were okay. butthurt that they uh, desexualized the uh, green M and M, which I didn't know M and Ms were sexualized in the first place. I mean, well, so the green M&M M&M has been sexualized for a long time. Yeah, because of the yeah. female character. Like she, the one she wears female. high heels, and she's got a very ha. sassy attitude. And the, the, the only reason I know about this is because Tucker Carlson had, like, a freaking meltdown. Oh, my God. He, he, he cares <laughs> about Tucker that shit Carlson way too much. He, I'm like, um, Tucker, when when I eat my M and M's, I don't think about how I want to sodomize them. I think yeah, they, about so how they, they the change that happened is they they changed her shoes from like block from high heels to block heels. Like they're not stilettos anymore. They're more sensible no. shoes at this point. And Tucker Carlson fucking hates it. <laughs> and Tucker Carlson is off a rocker anyway. Also, own Henry is better than Snickers anyway. Mm. Now, I, I mean, tell you, what I like best, my favorite candy bar, what you want to call it? Oh, oh Henry like, is the ultimate chocolate bar. I mean, yeah, by and large, Tucker Carlson's an idiot, but like, he, he's kind of like that blind squirrel that, like, you know, every so, or no, actually, uh, Broken Clock, you know, he's right twice a day, but for the most yeah. part, he's a fucking buffoon. <laughs> but only entirely <laughs> by accident, though, and, and definitely not on this issue. But that was- no. <laughs> I mean, like, it, is, this, by the way. it is a little weird that they felt the need to change her, but on the other hand, I don't fucking care. Yeah. I don't um, care either. Although, did no. you guys see the... Was it on your server, Kai, that this was posted or somewhere else? But I remember seeing a uh, like a Spectrum image of the M&Ms from sub to dom. <laughs> mm. yeah. I don't recall that, but I need that It was like the, <laughs> the, the, the five M&Ms characters like, in a lineup. Yeah. And like the green M&M was on the far right where it said Dom, and then like I think wh- whichever one was like the cowardly one on the far left where it said Sub. Jeez. <laughs> mm. I'll see if I can find it again for you later. I just found it. That's fucking glorious. <laughs> yeah. Wh- which one? What one? Glorious where? and and true. Oh, oh fuck! I just realized something. Hold on. Give me a fucking second. <laughs> By the way, Luca. <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, Luca, you're the only one who hasn't heard this joke. Somebody posted on Twitter, Why is uh, Russia so interested in invading the Ukraine? And I, I responded, two extra troops at the beginning of each turn. Uh, I'm sorry, repeat that? That's why is Russia want to invade the Ukraine, and I said two extra troops at the beginning of each turn. It's It's a Drisk joke. You don't play Risk, I, do you? I, I, I play a Risk. <laughs> I, like, I just had to hear it a second time to be like, wait, hold on. Did I hear that correctly? And I yeah. said. Two extra troops at the beginning of each turn. I don't know if that's true. That's factual, like, accurate, but it sounds like it ought to be. <laughs> that's, wow. Sounds about uh, right to me. Yeah, I, I mean. I'm we'll, 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 we'll have to ask Insulin. She'd know. I mean, yeah, the Russians are trying to, like, trigger World War Three of their bullshit again. Hmm. It's like, Mom, the Russians are misbehaving again. Then again, it's the Ukraine. Is that really? Why, why, do, they call, why do they call it the Ukraine? It's just They the don't. Pe- a lot of people do, but it's not correct. Yeah, I know. What? But is it it's Ukraine? Although, just saying Ukraine feels weird. Hmm. Because we're so used to hearing people say the Ukraine. Mm. <laughs> I mean, as opposed to saying uh, Uranus, most people say Uranus. Mm. What's up? Cool. 
under no circumstances show what I'm sending you on stream. But oh, while shit. some people well some people are desexualizing the green M&M. So you so, <laughs> so what you're saying is uh, this is like the joke I sent you earlier. <laughs> now I'm curious, huh? I'm curious too. What, what did you? Oh my god! It? I can I can never unsee that now. <laughs> Kai, DM it to me, please. I it's will. Good. I'm gonna. I'm, oh I my will. god! Fuck. Oh fuck! <laughs> I, I hate it. <laughs> that is cursed as fuck. <laughs> oh, is fuck it, is this a green M and M with like a fucking penis or some shit? Oh, no, 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 no! Stop, don't even don't, don't think about it. Don't think about it. I'm Where's... trying not to. I want to be surprised. Where the fuck are you? I'm looking for you. Hold on. <laughs> I can't <laughs> see through the tears, my God. <laughs> uh. Well, oh, they're around, all right, bizarre. Bizarre. Why the fuck? I'm shopping in the bazaar when I meant to say Burnswell. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking god. Oh god. Uh, hold on. I'll DM you there. Oh, thank All you. Right. That that helped. Yeah. I also said said right, it to you, Blast. Your name is now Bazarwell. <laughs> what the oh. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I strangely aroused? <laughs> uh, that's a question for for you and your therapist. Man, don't say that. Don't say that to Tucker Carlson. He might. I don't know. Oh my God! Somebody do it! Somebody do it! Somebody do it! <laughs> <laughs> Tucker Carlson on Twitter. Hey, Tucker, what do you think of this? <laughs> well, she she's sexy again now, just like you wanted. Well, I mean, it would explode. I mean, it would, it, would, dick. it would be a violation of Twitter's rules because they allow nudity on their site. Yeah. <laughs> Just put a spoiler uh, over it. There you go. You're good. Oh. Can you do that's that? Become a, kind of, that's become a thing now of, peop of people, like, <laughs> just like are... randomly grabbing it, fi like finding a picture, image, whatever, and just, ooh, okay. You you can't see that. You have to click on it. Holy shit! Look at to... all these new hunts. God damn. Oh. Mutant flan. Oh, you can hunt one of my one of my favorite hunts in this game. Okay. Hold on, Kai, there's a bunch of them, so I don't know which one you mean. Uh, the verbal bunny. Oh my god! Fucking <laughs> yeah. game. Piece of that shit. one is funny. It doesn't even look like a bunny. Also, we got we got to go hunt somebody's ringworm problem. Ew. Gross. What? It says what it right it? there. Ringworm. What? One of the uh, comments. Uh, ringworm on that by, by by as posted by Balzac. <laughs> Balzac. <laughs> and what was that guy? One of the, the the only remaining comment on that picture is like I missed five seconds ago when I didn't know this existed. Yeah. <laughs> Balzac the Jaws of Death from Guar. Five seconds ago was a much better time. Here you go, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna send this to. Uh, oh dear. I'm gonna send this to all of all, all of you. <sighs> This is my claim to fame for the night. <laughs> By the way, did you guys uh, take a look at that link I put up there last night about Mr. Delicious? Oh dear. <laughs> I, I, I've, been, I've been afraid to click it, but after seeing this, I think I should be good. You've been inoculated by yourself already. Oh, whoops. That is not what I meant to say. Holy shit. Damn uh -oh. it. Uh, I, just, I just sent Shadowcat the same thing you sent me. Hold on, where the hell did my... I am oh. Shadowcat again! Woo! Just say, who's Shadowcat? Give <laughs> <laughs> me pride? Or, no I, cat, my bad. I've gotten used to it by by now, and I've been called worse, so I will take it. Okay, <laughs> I sent you the same thing by accident. I mean, it's the same image that fucking uh, Kai sent. Alright, here we go. Blast action, I send you the right one. I didn't even send blast action. Why? Why do I suck at life? Damn it. 
I see he is saying, wait, wait, where am I? Oh, that's why. I get control V instead of just upload file. Why is it the thanks I hate it Reddit is so fucking funny? Yes. <laughs> Same thing. It's the way it is. Oh, bay. You're gonna get. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't even know. I my mind oh. is not. Where should Luca, be? why, why get... are you sending me this? Why are you sending me the thing that Kai already sent me? <laughs> uh, look, look who I added in the image. Yeah, I see. Oh, you changed it. <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh. Like who he sent it to on Twitter. I don't see the, the difference. What? Look what's right above the Oh, he sent it to Tucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. E Beautiful. All right, let's see. Um, do I have to talk to anybody else here? Actually, I'm going to delete this before I get reported. <laughs> For what? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't actually know. Fuck it, I'll leave it. I mean, if I get banned from Twitter, what do I fucking care? Twitter's accessible, anyways. I mean, <coughs> as people have already said, that that's allowed on Twitter. As long as you spoil it. I don't think you have to. Probably would be best on the safe side. I don't side. know if you can spoiler things on Twitter. Isn't you can. That a Discord thing. I think so. Hold on, let me see. Uh, let me. Uh, I really uh, hope he replies. He won't. I really hope he replies, and he's either very angry or very thankful. Like maybe he's really into it. I, I'm pretty sure somebody else. Uh, if he's really into it, you have to send his reply to to Gurley. And me. <laughs> Okay, I'm not downloading an app or this shit. How to mark your tweets as sensitive, that would be it. Look here, come back on top of the corner and go to saying privacy, privacy, and say, and scroll to the tweet media section, check mark me as can you this? That's not sensitive. I mean, I would post it on Facebook and be like, hey, look what I said, Tucker Carlson, but, yeah, but the Zuck would not like that. <laughs> yeah, the Zuck. That guy really Zucks. Actually, hold on, there's somebody I can DM this to, then they might get a kick out of it. I would have thought that, who would have thought that Lex Luthor, Luther was the least psychotic character that Jesse Eisenberg played. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, if, if a real person is making Lex Luthor seem like the stable one. Oh, hold on, let me find this group. I can just send it to multiple people at one time. Provided the group still exists, no messages. Not, not the, okay, Facebook's being stupid again. Mm. And by stupid, I mean it's being Facebook. Uh Oh wow, this group. Oh, yeah, I have not messaged this group in a hot minute. Only hell. Mm. <laughs> Has it really been that long? I guess. Yeah, screw up. I'll, I'll send it to the one person that'll that honestly is still active. Okay, I don't know why it took me here. down here that's new at the store. Oh shit, it is midnight. Holy hell. Or er, almost midnight. Uh, or now, well, I don't know about you. Now we're away from it here. Ten here. I was going to say, what the hell already? It would, huh? It's the old pull-ins. I think, I think Luca's uh, central time. I am. No, that's not right. That'd be an hour even further. I'm away. Central Time. 
Well, it's midnight just... Eastern time. It's midnight for or no. no? For me, it's ten p.m. For Eastern time, it's eleven p.m. Right, which is not midnight. I'm Central time, and it's ten p.m. This gate. Low town. Uh, don't even get me started. If it was on a a mega, it would be. G he's on GMT, so <laughs> like it's bed t and like about 10 p.m. or so 4 for him. For it's 4 p.m. here. So that's usually when he hops off the voice chat. <laughs> I remember what we were talking about. This was funny when we were talking about at one point. I don't know, the subject. I think it was one, one of his earlier YouTube videos about Colin Kaepernick. And after the whole thing with the Take a Knee movement, he's recounted at Poundland, which is, I guess, their version of Dollar Tree over there. Yeah. Uh, are you sure that's what it is? I guess. Roughly, yeah. So sounds like something yeah. else entirely to me. Uh -huh. Yeah, the, the, it, the, the, the Poundland, I've heard of it. Uh, I watch Big Clive. Of they course had, I do. They got, an, they, got a free, they got frozen foods there, and they had not freezer full of Ben and okay, Ben and Jerry's had done a Colin Kaepernick had his image on an ice cream of theirs and uh, it was all in the Poundland freezer after that. Gross. Because uh, regular stores weren't carrying it. But I was on the voice chat referring to like after the Nike ad what was his one well, even something even if it means sacrificing everything. And I saw so many parodies of that, and so many had one with Ric Flair in it, and it still remains my favorite. It says, sacrifice nothing. Be a limousine riding, jet flying, kiss stealing, wheeling dealing, son of a gun. <laughs> and I already said, just woo it. <laughs> wee wee. The nature boy! Woo! Stone boy. Uh, there was one with the Andy Savage. I can't remember what that one said. <laughs> Just ooh, yeah. Oh. Odd creature. A horn on his head? I can't tell. Uh, these, these big guys do, yeah. Okay. Oh, hello. All right, I'm gonna Ooh, hop hello. into uh, my friend's uh, ser other server. So uh, it's good hanging out you guys for a little bit. Mm, yep. Have a good one. Boy, enjoy your final mm. fantasy. Mm. I shall. I know that that exists. Mm -hmm. There's apparently a thing uh, that, that 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 you can do, and people have done this. It is a it's a fashion thing, which is why I hadn't heard of it until now. But apparently, with the proper enamels and uh, the use of a falsy as part of the uh, process. A clear falsy, specifically. You can have nails that look like amber. With a mosquito embedded in them. Weird. Yep. I hate it. I thought it was cool until I heard about the mosquito. They, they have actually embedded in a, 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 a mosquito corpse between their nail and a falsy. Is it a real one? 
Yes. Yeah. I, th I thought it was bad enough to have, like, a fake-looking one, but a real one is even weirder. Dave, uh... <sighs> I, I saw one that was, like, even... even worse. People are weird. They, uh... They literally would take a uh, fal false na nail and, and put bugs, most probably like more likely ants, yeah. in there and seal the end in there, and they're still in there. That's it's uh, like why would you do that? They're gonna die in there. That's it's rude. People are weird. Very rude. People are strange. When you're a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> when you're strange. That's a good song, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Both versions. I don't know there was two. There was the original version by The Doors, and then there was the cover, which was on a soundtrack to The Lost Boys. I forget who did it. Oh, okay. I like the original. I will admit, I heard the cover version first. Uh, Echo and the Bunnymen did the uh, remake. That's a that's a name. So, uh, uh, another thing from uh, the thanks I hate it Reddit. What? Uh, uh, woman made some homemade waffles for. Uh, her significant other here, and he's trying to cut through it, and it's he can't get through it, so he pulls it apart, and there's a pregnancy test. And he's like, okay, so what, what's this doing in my food? And she, yeah. he's, he's like, it's a test. What's it look like? He says, this mean you're pregnant? She said, yeah. He said, well, what's it doing in my food? <laughs> <laughs> you could have just told me you're pregnant. Dude is more concerned about his, his waffles. Man, yeah. I did my own then, part. Then, there, yeah. then there's the... Uh... The 2021 version where it's a COVID test in your cake. Oh no! <laughs> no 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 no. That's one more. That's one kitchen gadget that I don't have that I probably would get. I don't, know, I don't have enough room in it, but I'd get it anyway. I do not have a waffle iron in this house. I have found the perfect waffle iron online. It is a Captain America waffle iron. Waffles come out looking like Captain America's shield. I was gonna say, please tell me it looks like a shield. Yeah. <laughs> so I would get that, and I would have to get some strawberry and blueberry syrup and some whipped cream, and get the colors just right. But yeah, it uh, looks like a shield. They also yep. make a a single cup uh, coffee maker and has the mug. And the colors pull Captain America. Yes, Kren. They're going to make a waffle a waffle maker in the shape of Captain America's ass. <laughs> I mean, America's it, is America's it is America's, it is America's, ass. America's ass. ass. <laughs> and Captain America throws his mighty shield. And yet, I could I know all the lyrics to that. I just love with that moment where he's. Time traveling has knocked his himself out, and he looks down. like that is America's ass. <laughs> uh, that is kind of like I would say. One guy said that was kind of all became catchphrases was... and pop culture references. Like, eh, yeah, that maybe was... he is right in that case. That was probably Chris Evans is doing. Um, let's be honest. Yeah, totally. I would say, what was it? Up until what was the last? Was he did. Oh, Knives Out. I think the first one, one I can think of that wasn't based on a comic book that he's done. I think every movie I can think of was based on a comic book that he's been in. Uh, all the Marvel movies, uh, including the Fantastic Four movies he was in. 
Snowpiercer, that was a comic book. Uh, the Losers, comic. Scott Pilgrim, comic. I've told many of you, I don't know if all of you, the one that, <laughs> okay. There's an interview on Graham Norton uh, with Henry Cavill, and he was discussing being a fan of Warhammer. And kind of giving a full rundown of what the sh game is about, what you do, you know, make buying the miniatures, putting them together, painting them, all that stuff. And Graham's like, you have people over, <laughs> invite people over to the house for this. I think, oh, yes. And Tom Holland, who was also a guest, kind of like, can I come over? Yeah. <laughs> That's like one more. <laughs> one more of us, one less of them. Yes. Excellent. For the Emperor! I feel like Tom Holland would be fun to have in a role-playing game. I was going to tell you that that's one uh, among the people who join uh, Omegon's Discord. We have their Star Tom Trek Holland? ranked. No, me. You're uh, not Tom Holland. Uh, but uh, we all get ranks of one thing or another, and his main fandom scene between Judge Dredd and uh, Star Trek, and I am official red shirt on them now. <laughs> Congratulations, you've reached the lowest rung. And I, well, I've just started, and I said, yeah. I'm the, like, with a phaser in one hand and a chain sword in the other. I think you might be getting your fans uh, mixed I, up. Well, that's <laughs> the thing. They, I'm understanding this. I said, live long and prosper. For the Emperor! <laughs> See, it would be more appropriate if you had a phaser in one hand and a laze gun in the other one, because the red shirt is Imperial Guard. <laughs> uh, phaser, phaser is kind of... Laser, lace gun, you know. No, I'm just saying, yeah. like, the Space Marines are not expendable. The Imperial Guard yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. I will say, uh, what was the one, um, had the picture of uh, Obi-Wan and Luke and they show him the lightsaber. An elegant weapon for a more civilized time. And this is a Space Marine with a chainsaw. Vroom, vroom, motherfucker. Yep, nothing civilized in 40k. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and that's the way we like it. <laughs> Although when it comes to brutal combat, at least the Ultramarines are, are pretty... Um, sort of sophisticated people, relatively speaking. <laughs> relatively speaking. I mean, I mean originally they were being trained to be uh, statesmen and governors when the war was over. Back in the old days when they thought that the war could ever end. Yeah, if you compare, <laughs> well, that's the thing. Some I've put this forward, and I think it was Omega. And I put this forward. He said, "Yeah, I mean, pretty much the emperor's plan after he had uh, brought the United the Galaxy was pretty much." What he got in the Horus Heresy, they were supposed to fight each other to the death. What, so that they could kill each other off and not be around anymore? Right! Then it would be a peaceful time in the galaxy. Well, nobody told Rubut Girly Man that plan. Uh, well, apparently, uh, nobody, anybody else, or... I mean, hell, I guess he didn't really tell Horus that it had to be Erebus from spring that in his ear. <laughs> There's no way Airbus would know that. He was just... He was just causing shit. That's poor what Airbus does. Poor old Sanguinius. Airbus is the, uh... The, the quintessential shit stirrer. Mm. I mean, he, he caused the heresy in the first place. Exactly! Personally, if I had to say somebody who's, if we had to say somebody who's better, the quintessential space marine exemplar, I wouldn't even say it was the ultimate. I would say it was the imperial fists. Yeah. 
Can't argue with that. Mm. Then again, all of them were pale imitations. Or the, uh, or the salamanders. Uh, Not physically, uh, of course, but mentally. They were all pale imitations of what we got in the custodies. The, the custodes. Yeah. Yeah, but they, can, they can't mass produce that many custodes, so mm. that's why they're they're kept as the Emperor's bodyguard. Mm. You alright there, Kai? Unfortunately. Mm. What's well, up? Uh, with very little warning, I seem to have found the weird part of this Reddit. There was a not weird part? Yeah. This is right on everything weird. <laughs> uh, uh, there is a video of a training procedure for piercing one's land end. Oh dear. Why are Sadly, you... Sadly, I've, I've you seen artwork of that. A magic cross piercing, as they called it. In case you were curious. Jesus. I didn't know that they made training penises for piercing. Although I'm kind of glad that they do. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to go I'm... in that shit willy-nilly. So to speak. Oh no. Also, if Warhammer is the far future and Star Wars was a long time ago, does that make Star Wars the Assassin's Creed of Warhammer? I remember that somebody was asking how do we travel in... I guess faster than light in these places, and they explained how it works in Star Wars. Hmm, I remember how it this works one. In Star Trek, and then the last one, 40k. We literally go through hell. Yeah, there's like scientific definitions of how faster than light travel works, like how warp speed works and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, Warhammer's just like, oh yeah, we rip a hole in reality and take a shortcut through hell. <laughs> then you ever seen the through movie literal, uh, he literal hell? Ever seen the movie Event Horizon? Yeah, well, Event Horizon is definitely the work. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and even better, you're going to hell with Sam Neill at your side. Which, if you've ever seen that and, uh, what was that movie? In the Mouth of Madness. God damn it, Sam. You do some fucked up shit. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mega Triple Bill, Event Horizon, In the Mouth of Madness, and Possession. Just a fucked up Sam Neill triple bill. I haven't seen those. I have not seen Possession. I have seen In the Mouth of Madness. Uh, that was kind of his almost apocalyptic trilogy. That, Prince of Darkness, and The Thing. What was it? Somebody put something, uh... It was a flash drive, but it was hidden in a thing that looked like a little mini, uh, candy bar. And it says, some sickos give kids razor blades or needles in their candy bar. Me? They're getting 20 gigs of John Carpenter movies. <laughs> you sick fuck. Uh, <laughs> no, that's actually a treat for any kid. It's like, see the good stuff. You know, see the thing and escape from New York and uh, <clears throat> big trouble in little China. <laughs> that actually reminds me of uh, speaking of horror writers and, and whatnot. Um, yeah. Did you ever play this computer game that was uh, Clive Barker's Undying? I have... <laughs> It was pretty old now. Oh, that one. I remember enjoying it at the time. Yeah. Video game writ written by Clive Barker. Mm -hmm. It was weird. It was weird. Yeah. <laughs> Burnsville saw Event Horizon unaware that it was going to be a horror movie. He was like, uh -huh. what the fuck is going on? <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. That sounds like that the best way to see it. This is the guy who would go on to direct uh, Lisa. The early uh, Resident Evil movies. Oh, gross. Mm -hmm. 
how the mighty have fallen. Kinda, of, cause let me tell you, the Resident Evil movies is nothing like Event Horizon. The Horizon, Event Horizon, was the apex. It was all downhill from there. Apparently. I want no. I think you know. I will say. I don't know which came first. No, I will say. The first Mortal Kombat movie. I think he directed that too. He doesn't have been having a very good career, has he? I have had what he's got paid for. Yeah. See, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Yeah, the first Mortal Kombat movie, yeah. Event Horizon. Oh my god. Mm. You put ribs in the oven at 200 degrees for four hours and they'll fall off the bone. Your body is on your skeleton at 98.6 degrees for 70 years and nothing. <laughs> True enough. I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad that doesn't work because I don't I don't want my scalp falling off. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> Valid points were made, however. This is true. You've really fallen into the rabbit hole of Reddit, haven't you? <laughs> I sadly have. <laughs> idea of taking a fire elemental and making it into a living bomb. <laughs> it squigs! Have you, have you yeah. seen some of the enemies in 14? They are literally floating fireballs. Well, yeah, they've got those in this game too. I'm fighting them right now. Sounds like they're squigs! Or the elementals, which are just literally balls of fire. Squigs are just bouncing balls which eventually explode. <laughs> well, if you put dynamite on them, they do. And they do do that. Yeah. Mm. Remember they had them in, in the Space Marine game. Space Marine? <laughs> that, that came out of nowhere, that sequel announcement, though, eh? We've been waiting yeah, for that sequel for so long, and it's finally happening. Yeah, we'll see. I mean... Yeah, we'll see if it's good or not. I thought this was a great trick, but I can only do it once. <laughs> <laughs> That's the old Daffy Duck one. Daffy Duck, the floating grenade. Mm. Swallows the gasoline, gunpowder, and nitro, then lights it. Boom! It's a great trick, yeah, but I can only do it once. <laughs> I like how they disguise this land bridge here with all this falling sand. If you come over here, you can see there's a way across. A fun visual trick. I was telling Sony about this. You know, they did. They have like a sub set of the WWE action figures, the WWE Hollywood figures. The first set came out a month or so ago, and it's it's the Rock, it's you know, Dwayne Johnson and John Cena from the 
Fast and the Furious movies, and then has Roddy Piper from They Live. Another great John Cena. That's from which we cut the great, uh, the great quote. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I am all out the bubblegum. He also had a very good appearance in Saints Row. Mm. Yeah. Which also had Hulk Hogan. Mm. The so Paul second Hogan was wave... playing somebody else, and Roddy yeah. Piper was there as himself. Yeah. The second wave of figures. It's an odd mix. We've got Dwayne Johnson's figure again, this time from the Scorpion King. Oh, no, we've I got... don't want to be in this room. We got a Roman, uh, Roman Reigns figure from the Hobbs and Shaw movie. It's like that kind of little too Remember recent. that room, Snow? Which one? The, uh, the room in these in the caves here where the, the radar goes all crazy. Mm. Oh, yeah. There's that big optional boss in there that, that's probably twice my level right now. <laughs> Wait, and the what level are you right now? 35. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then the other I can figure... handle the stuff out here, but it's a oh, bit sorry. tough. But the guy in there probably one shot. Me. Did I ever play Disco Elysium? I did not. 60% off right now. Disco. I should check to see if it's on Game Pass. Off the air, what the fuck are you doing over there? Mm, He's going on an adventure. Please. He is on his own on the little adventure. Oh <laughs> god, that... Yes. I just, uh, I, I read something that is real and probably the most Dark Souls thing I've ever seen in nature. Uh-oh. Mm. Is, uh... An insect. Uh, called the Redu <sighs> Reduvidae, uh, mm. also known as the Assassin Bug, and it wears its victim's corpse as armor. Holy shit. <laughs> Alright then. <laughs> it's that is, that's hardcore. Dark soul shit. Mm. <laughs> that bug is not fucking around. <laughs> mm. Wow. That is incredibly Dark Souls. It is. Reminds me of, um, there's an item in Dark Souls called the Head of Avarice, which is a helmet you get that you can wear that that looks like a mimic. In other words, the treasure chest to try to eat you, and you can wear one as a helmet. Nice. It might be an actual mimic corpse, I'm not sure. If I remember correctly, it raises the odds that you will get item drops, but I think it also damages you over time or something. Oh dear. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> okay. I have never had anything that made me feel old. Uh oh. The, the, Ro the Royal Rumble is going on tonight, and they just saw the internet. I'd forgotten he was a he was a wrestler in WWE now, Dominic Mysterio. Who? <laughs> Son of Rey Mysterio. And I like I used to watch him, you know, back in the nineties, first in WCW and then in the early aughts in WWE, and now his son is old enough to be a WWE wrestler. It's like, okay, I feel fucking old. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Cause right, I remember so he this, So for this hunt I have to hang around and wait right here until the snake shows up. Let us wait for Snack. Snack. No step on Snack. Snack. I'm gonna Snack. step all over Snack. Nah, I can't. Ah. Uh... <laughs> oh, there you Snack are. That didn't take too long. Snack um... says, please steppy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a snack is into that being stepped on. Who knows? We don't kink shame around here. It's like that uh, classic, um, that one meme I saw where you see the, the snake wearing a bondage harness in a ball game and it says, "Please step on me." Uh, there, was, oh, there was one. Let's see if I can find it here because it was a great response I made to. Uh, on uh, Twitter, 
Somebody's showing some old uh, pulp novel cover has some guy tied down with some lady on top of him. Flesh. Uh, he was a luckless cuckold trapped in a flesh snare. And I'm looking at, especially the lady, I said, luckless? Could it be entirely subjective here? Right? <laughs> Uh, it's Krista Faust. I'm so close to that. She's a good writer. She's got a flair for the old pulp type writing. What possible reason could nature have come up with for the fact that the shoebill crane can apparently make its spine bulge from its mouth? I've seen footage of Yes. Why? It's horrible. <laughs> I have seen footage and it is nasty. It looks like it's trying to barf. It looks like it's trying to barf out its own throat. Oh no! Why? <laughs> See, here's no here's the mistake of, of of attributing nature to having a will and intent of any kind, and not just well, being the result of random mutations. Sur survival is the intent, so there is an intent, nope. whether nope. it's conscious or not. Uh, there's no such thing as unconscious intent. Yes, there is. No. Yes, there are entire books on, on it in psychology. Well, okay, but that's that still means that psychology is still in reference to things that have consciousness in general. Na Nature well, does not. not your best. The, the, the intent is still to survive. That is the purpose of nature. Quote unquote intent. Call it whatever you want. The fact is, is that's what it is. <laughs> like, that, like, that is the entire basis of evolution, for example, is survival of the fittest. And yes, I don't know how, how this trait came to be and exist and continue to exist. I don't see how it helps anybody survive. <laughs> You know what? This guy needs the big guns. Get quickened! Well, pyroclasm you, sir. Mm -hmm. Get wrecked. Not a chance. Get fancy attacked, you jerk. <laughs> I'm going to Dragon Ball you to death. Ah, uh, me! Ha! Mm -hmm. ah. I love how they do that, considering it's based on a Polynesian king's name that is not pronounced that way. Yeah. I remember uh, Magnum P.I. I want to hang out the King Kamehameha Club. Yep. Speaking you know, of which, it's Tom Selleck's birthday today. Who you can play as in Civilization, by the way. Not Tom Selleck. Kamehameha. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Fuck yeah, yeah I'll play to Tom Selleck. The man with the possessor of the gayest moustache in history. I see you. Cast Sadly, Megan not an uh, American president, though. Yet. Mm. <laughs> that didn't do much damage to him. It, he's played one, although he played him before he was president. I'm... He uh, yeah. played uh, he played I'm... Eisenhower in this, uh, one movie. Wait, who did? Tom Selleck. No. I thought you said Bob Saget for a second. I'm like, wait, what? He did what? <laughs> no! <laughs> Bob Saget don't didn't ever had a mustache. You don't know that for sure. Never seen him with one. Well, he can now because he's kind of come down with the case of the death. Ay, 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 ay. It's temporary. <laughs> it's temporary. He'll be resurrected soon. <laughs> Here she on comes. the promised day. It was all just part of his act about the aristocrats. <laughs> mm, oh, jeez, that thing. I heard the, oh, God. The one time I actually heard a really good joke from Larry the Cable Guy. Uh, excuse me. It was on, uh, they were on The Tonight Show. It was him, Bill Ingvall, and Jeff Foxworthy. And somebody was coming out and saying, what's that movie now where they tell the same joke over and That's over? For you. And Jay goes, the aristocrats? And he goes, no, the dudes are having it. Yeah. Oh wow. Damn, Larry. 
I like how you so can do I... this weird, these weird combos and these abilities. How this about is a very strange these? system. Actually, it hits turn combo. It makes me think of the combination spells you can do in uh, a game I'm actually uploading called Switch Odin, where you can actually buy like oh, rune abilities. Yeah. My oh god, that is one thing. They say it's supposed to be out by now, and there's supposed to be a physical copy, but I've yet to see it anywhere. And that is the latest Shin Megami Tensei game. Cause oh, I yeah. really want to play that. I prefer Persona. Back to the weird part. So that is enough internet for today. Every, every, I'm done. Every, everybody and their mother keeps telling me to play Persona. By the way, that was absolutely perfect, Kai. He mentions Shin Megami Tensei, and you're like, all right, back to the weird part. <laughs> <laughs> you are not you are not wrong at all. Nope. The game is fucking weird. Alright, time to farm some zombies. Mm. Yeah, so look, you get back to us after you play Persona. <laughs> um Well, once I get a job and I get money, I might actually do that. Yeah. That's right, follow me, crazy grudge bitch. S skip one and two though. Start at three. I was told to just jump straight into five. I don't know why. Well, five's the best one, but I think three and four are also very good. Oh, fuck, I'm being attacked. <laughs> Kitty, no. Yeah. Shit, I'm yeah, being attacked by monsters tough. that drink too much monster and Red Bull and whatnot. I cannot drink those, they taste nasty to me. Red Bull is disgusting. Uh, I have tried them all. I tell you one thing that was pretty good. Oh, Best those, energy drink I is balls. I don't know if the brand Great. still exists anymore. Remember, if I remember Sobe. Nope. Well, the uh, grocery store uh, or the so drink brand. Or Sobe. So -A. A. Yeah, yeah, that's a grocery store here. Well, S O B E. Actually, no, S O B E Y is the grocery store. Well, no, no Y, but uh, there's a little line of energy drink. I could drink those. I tried. What was that? Uh, I tried kicks. The uh, whatever. Not do kickstart, uh, that was nasty. I finally said, fuck it, I'll just drink coffee. Coffee, I can drink. Uh, well, yeah, Luca, Burns Hall brings up a good point. When you do get around to getting get the games, make sure you get Persona 5 and not Persona 5 Strikers, which is a Street Fighter game. <laughs> gotcha. Or, or, or get both if you feel like it. Like, I'm not saying anything bad about Strikers, it's just not the RPG, is what, that's our mm. point. Okay, I might have made a mistake here. Also, it, it'll it'll give spoilers for the RPG. So if, if you play both, play the RPG first. And why did you make a mistake? You're just making weird declarations and then going silent on us. All right, so I there, there's a zombie in Seven Days to Die that like lures other zombies to them. And all the time we say lured um, are sprinters, and they gave me a broken leg. Which is like the worst injury you can get in this game. What's that new zombie game? I can't. Project Zomboid. Yeah, that one. That one's been getting a lot of popularity lately. Yeah, I was yeah, watching. I, I think it just came out of early access or something. I was watching. It's a gun yeah. play through, and it was <laughs> fun. Yeah, I got it on my uh, Steam wish list. I want to get it eventually. I would urge to throw this out there real quick. Sobe was not technically an energy drink. There was a line of energy drinks under the title or under the name, but they right. were in general not energy drinks. Yeah. Um, I will it was, say. It was the pure rush. That was the energy drinks. Everything mm. else was like a uh, iced tea or. I a think it was pure rush. Uh, thing or like vitamin infused yeah. water. I remember what was it enhanced Fruit water Fruit. beverages is technically yeah. what they were. Oh, I was yeah. looking at some uh, smart water on the shelf today and looking at all the stuff they had in there and the names they gave to were supposed to give to you and the stuff that was in it. And I was like, you know, I'll just get water. Just plain old, you know, I was like, I don't need tangerine or lemon. Zest or Angus, I swung a bang along along. I got stuff in there. Mm -hmm. Just give me water. Aqua. It's pretty what I, much what I need, you know, more than anything. It's my digestion. 
than anything because I drank way too much coffee and soda. Too much coffee? Like, is, is that a thing, Kai? No. It, <laughs> can, it can mess with your digestion. Trust me. No, right. well, yeah, I, I think, mean, it's, I, it's I, guys, I think, I think the last thing we're going to do for today's stream, we're going to do this one. We're going to do this one for Snowcat. Mm -hmm. Let's hunt the Vorpal Bunny. I, I, I would love to actually have a, a have somebody say that and have me believe it, because I've never had that problem with coffee, ever. It, it coffee. will. When you drink coffee and sodas and not, and not enough water. Coffee is water. Coffee is just water with coffee in it. Well, well I sometimes mean, it's, it's, it's coffee, dirty coffee flavor water. Dry. Sometimes your body will tell you you just need water. I don't know if well, it I does mean, dehydrate you. Does it? I don't know about that, but you know there are times it, kind of it, like well, it's it speeds up your metabolism. I know that much. That's why, like you know, when you have enough of it in the morning, it's like oh, I gotta go. I've never had that experience, so I can't say that that's a that's like a universal truth. Now. I mean, I know it speeds your metabolism because of the, uh... I mean, I can believe sun. that, the caffeine. Yeah, the caffeine. I just have a weird digestive system, middle. I know there are some, you know, false food beliefs yeah. out there. Like, people say that, you know, like, soda will dehydrate you, but it doesn't. Yeah. Because it's it's water and other stuff. It hydrates you. It just doesn't hydrate you as much as our mm. pure water would. Yeah. Water's still better for you that way. But. I actually found I it was better. I my digestion worked better if I drank more water. I actually have a one quart canteen I keep in the fridge, and if I can drink it in one day, it actually come, everything comes out better. Well, I mean, the stuff in soda that's bad for you is all the like the corn syrup, the oh sugar, yeah, and right, it's not a lot. Ingredients. I probably have way too much sugar and fat in my diet right also, now. Also, I love the fact that the people who send us to f fight the Vorpal Bunny are the Viera. Bunnies hunting <laughs> bunnies. <laughs> Bunny wars. I wish I could remember mm -hmm. this anime series I watched. There's a guy who... I've seen clips of it. His guy, and he's got this, like, big pistol here, and he travels with these women. One of them was a Benny girl. When some night character is just like acting like an ass, especially for the bunny girl, and or the guy had already told him, you know, or eating, mind your manners, when he's about to just go off on the women, all of a sudden the guy goes flying backwards, and then the guy's got the pistol in hand and said, You were told to mind your manners. <laughs> I'm not asking a second time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> he just blasted him across the room. You were told you mind your man. I was like, damn. <laughs> I forgot there was a term. And I just had it. It's like... I guess it's different from furries or an offshoot. It's like, okay. Furries, I'd seem as actual anthropomorphic animals. They got the yes. fur and the paws and everything else. But then there's the Not other. Not necessarily one, paws, but but often. But there's the ones that's got. It's just basically look like complete humans. They just have like ears and a tail. Yeah, like Nico, for example. Yeah, and I cannot remember what the term was now. I don't know if that counts as a kind of furry, but it, or at least it just does. adjacent. Yeah. It, it, subset kind of like yeah. scale like all scalies are furries too but they're scalies yeah it's funny because people who are not furries get, can never figure that out it's like they're scalies not furries i'm like well that's that's an incorrect statement <laughs> all all scalies are furries but not all furries are scalies yep another subset yeah <laughs> and no, like they don't the, have fur uh, but, the, but that's just thing. the way the terms went Sorry, Kai, what was that? I didn't catch what you just said. One sec. Okay. Maybe that was her telling us that she had to come back. <laughs> I 
catch a missile turn on my first. This one that's spraying heals. Okay, so about Snowcat, that. you know um, that this is also one of the more dangerous yeah. hunts in the game in its own way, right? Uh, I, I, I did actually say something. I don't remember what it was because somebody interrupted me out there. Oh, was I was not just wondering if it was, if it was ironically, I'll be right back. <laughs> it, it was not, sadly. Oh, that would be funny. Alright, we couldn't get into this part of the forest last time we were here, and now we can, and now we have a reason to. Alright. The problem with this hunt is he's going to run away from us a lot. And that means we're going to have to chase him around and a lot of things spawn as you walk around in that area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to get mobbed by undead while we're chasing a rabbit around. Mm. Yep. Oh, it's going to be a lot of XP no. though. <laughs> so humble. So humble. That should be the theme song for Project Zomboid. Could be. So if Harambe came back to life, would that make him Zomba Harambe? Mmm. Zombrambe. <laughs> the, the beloved pet of Rob Zombe. Pick sound for Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> would that be found somewhere in by the Apple Parallels? <laughs> well, or over over by Papatatsatsas? After you kill and skin it, then yes. <laughs> Kill it. Skin it. Flip it. Smack it. Flip it round. Bob it. Bob it. Pull it. <laughs> like it. Jack it. No. <laughs> Steal it. <laughs> Carjacking, you perverts. <laughs> Jack it. Is Stop that jacking like off the, your uh, car, you filthy animal. <laughs> nylon, <laughs> nylon ones. You filthy bastards. Fun fact, Luca, did you know there's a video game about a gay man having sex with his car? I'm in love with my car! <laughs> I, I, I'm not surprised by this revelation, but at the same time, I'm morbidly curious. <laughs> or at least he's driving his car very, very fast and having a climax in the process. <laughs> did he put it in the exhaust? Uh, no, uh, but if, he had. If, if, if he's driving it, then he's just driving it stick. Oh. Oh my god. Oh. Also, that just sounds like a bad idea. I think he actually was, though. Funny thing. <laughs> waka waka. I got stick, let me smash. I, I actually. Uh... <laughs> uh, motosexual <laughs> counts as gay if you see your car as being male, and you so are you. You got that one, Luca? Yeah, it's that, that, that one bird that's just yes. like... Yes! Uh, <laughs> I love I forgot, that one! I forgot what name is, he's like, let me smash, yeah. and she's like, no. And then he no. like builds a nut for her, and she's still like, no. <laughs> well, the thing is, that's, Becky. An actual, that's an actual thing. These birds, like, they build a nest, and if they can't attract a mate, he tears the nest apart, starts again. And what was that guy? Oh. Uh, speaking of driving stick, I have a slightly funny slash unfortunate sort of story. My dad oh. used to work with a guy uh, who used to drive stick, and uh, he was in an accident, and the uh, the seatbelt failed completely, ripped completely out of the chair and off the shoulder causing yep. him to move forward and then slide back and landed asshole first on the shifter. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Mm. Uh, wow. there was it, yeah, it was That's a spicy. real real unfortunate situation for him. Um he survived it. Um but he it, it took a lot of uh a lot of rehab to get everything back to the way it was supposed to and he never quite walked right he always had a little bit of a limp because it damaged the lower part of his spine mm. um oh you told me this story before but there was okay. a, a he would also not walk or he couldn't 
because of this walk at a yeah. constant rate of speed. So he would be walking and then he'd slow down or he'd speed up because that's what he had to do to keep balance. And uh, he and my dad were walking someplace and my dad has the same kind of sense of humor that I do. It, it should shock nobody. And uh, they're walking there and he's talk and they're talking and he said, I finally realized why you do that. And he looked at my daddy and he said, well, he said, when you speed up and slow down like that, and he looked at him confused, he said, you're shifting gears. <laughs> okay. Nice. Also, Burnswell uh, asks, uh, have you seen Titan movie about a woman becoming pregnant by a car? Oh, did God, get, that did, uh, fucking thing. Did she give birth to a mini? <laughs> Hey, if you get a STD from a car, would that be an automatic transmission? Yes. STD, would that be an SUV? My God. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yes, it would. Hey, there are worse. I've heard worse, and I've made worse transmission jokes. So. I bet you have. <laughs> Which does not like them, though, so I'll just Let's leave not. it at that. <laughs> and there's the Queen song, I'm in love with my car. Oh, dear. I want to ride my bicycle. Mm, that was uh, one of the... I, uh, that's the thing. Every member of the group uh, contributed songs for this. They were very much like the Beatles. Everybody contributed a song, and that was one of... Uh, I believe that I'm in love with my car was a Roger uh, Roger Taylor song. Bud Tingwell? Who the hell is that? Uh, huh? Oh, Burn, Burnswell is talking about something called Burn Bud Tingswell. You're just really bad with names today. I am. I'm just sort of going through menus and trying to pick out spells to cast while I'm also trying to talk. Well, the words are jumbling on top of each other. Not Bud Tingwell, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Bud Tingwell is what Burnswell said. <laughs> that is not the name he meant, though. Chuck Tingle. Nope, Did he Chuck, mean Chuck Tingle. Because holy <laughs> shit, they got that horribly wrong. <laughs> nope, Chuck Tester. <laughs> Chuck Tingle is the name of the guy who did the freaky gay books. Wow, that wasn't even close. Dick trickle, or dick trickle. You didn't get a single, uh, <laughs> a single, uh, fucking syllable correct in that. Well, I mean, ting. <laughs> okay, okay, one, one syllable. He also has a lesser explored, uh, series of lesbian books with not nearly as funny names, actually. Or Dick Trickle, <laughs> the race car driver, <laughs> with the most unfortunate name. I always, I always remember. But Tinkle is Tinko, a... it's an Australian actor. <laughs> yeah. I remember Fine. there was a. It's so fitting somehow. I forget what year it was. But it was the year, the first year that. Uh, yeah. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, wrote uh, One Day Tona, and he is on the Letterman Show doing the top ten list. What? No, top ten reasons took me. Dale Earnhardt, you know, senior. Uh, Twenty years to win Daytona, and I can only remember one of the answers was, "Who cares if it's twenty years? At least my name's not Dick Trickle." Wow. Which was the name of an actual race car driver. <laughs> you would think at that point you'd go by Richard. Uh, well, they would have called him that anywhere. You know, somebody here. Sure, Richard, but you don't oh, need to be technical. encouraging them, is my point. I mean, and, I'll and I'll tell you how long ago this joke was. Either that or he was leaning into it. <laughs> the number one reason was my new pit crew, the Spice Girls. I don't get it. The Spice Girls were a 
pop. I know. Group. Well, that I think they pretty much passed their pop yeah. status. Well, it's like that's uh, they're now Dale Earnhardt's pit crew. Hey, there's a little bugger. Come here, Vorpal Bunny. Like a single straight actor. I, I'm a steal from big, you. That's Bruce Big Chest. Yeah. I like the way he those little foliage floofs around. Mm -hmm. Plumage. Plumage. That's the word I wanted. Looks like a displacer. He's beast. not a bush. He looks kind of yeah, like one of them. It's a cute little thing. Yeah. Let's murder him. I, I, I find I find it funny <laughs> that with a lot of these uh, ones, people are ex are expecting like these big giant. Oh my gosh! Middle of the room bosses, and then you have this little fucker. Yeah. <laughs> also, I think maybe the the undead popping out all over the place might be conditional because it's not happening. Maybe oh, it's a nighttime right. thing. I don't know. Yeah. Not that the game normally has day-night cycles, so I'm not really sure what triggers that. Might be for the best, though. <laughs> Honestly. You know what? Should probably dispel this little bugger. He doesn't need to be taking half damage while we're chasing him around. Or whatever the exact reduction that Protect gives in this game. I was looking at. Oh, uh, somebody said. Would it be possible for an AI to have a human persona? A skin sona? Wow. I'm gonna go with no. I can see it. First. <laughs> First Sona sounds cute. Skin Sona sounds like something a serial killer would have. Skinwalker. That sounds like the sort of thing uh, you only no. get on on Skin Earth. <laughs> right, Kai? I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. Kai remembers that that joke from the other day. Proposal rejected. Skinwalkers. I prefer dog soldiers. Oh, actually, that reminds me. Have any of you seen the uh, movie Antlers? I've nope. heard of it. I haven't seen no. it yet. If it's a it's... scary movie, no sign. No, I haven't. Because yeah, I it's, it's scary it's, movies. It's about Wendigos. It's. I, I was gonna guess it's that. Mostly uh, good. Yeah, it's mostly good. I like, um, have, I like Ravenous though. That's a good Wendigo movie. You want, or if you want to see a really fun movie, see uh, Frostbiter, Wrath of the Wendigo. That's fucking crazy. Wrath of the Mandingo. Mandingo. Mandingo, oh I god. Be, uh... Right. Why, why am I thinking of wear flamingos now? Or yeah. what was one, uh, the ritual. That'd be that weird. Was... You, have, you have flamingos in your eyes? That would be, a, the... uh, that'd be a weird horror movie. Night of the Wear Flamingo. <laughs> Ever seen the ritual? No. Oh, why does I that think that so. sounds familiar? Maybe? That sounds familiar. Uh, it's like these guys going on a camping trip and running into some kind of crazy cult and those, what was it, the, 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 if I pronounce it, Jotun? Jotun. Yeah. Oh, wait, I, I, yeah, I think I've seen that some one before. Crazy the deer looking creature that, uh, I think... <laughs> Denmark, maybe? It's, uh, it's, uh... Sweden. Yeah, Sweden. it's Scandinavian. Okay. It's in Sweden. I mean, the Brit the, 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 pic the movie was British, but yeah, okay. they're in Sweden. That, that's a <laughs> valid placement for a Jotun, potentially, then? Yeah, but that was another one. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> have you seen uh, Hereditary? I have not. I've heard about it. That movie is that movie disturbed me. Like, it wasn't, to me, it wasn't scary. It was just disturbing. Or a Midsummer. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, which is basically a better retelling yeah. of the Wicker Man than the Nick Cage. Yeah, thing. exactly. Although, I mean, Khan, you can't That's a low bar, Cage, though, let's be honest. Well, well that's fucking yeah. Nick Cage. Yeah. You can't control anything I mean, Nick Cage does. And, and Nicholas Cage knew how ridiculous that movie was. He still had fun with it. I'm like, that's why I like oh, it. Oh, he, he hammed it up. Oh, God, no, you healed. You got too far away from me. Yeah, that's yeah, annoying. Yeah, Nicholas Cage has really good self awareness. He knows when he's in a crappy movie. I still love uh, my favorite of his is still gonna be uh, Con Air. Well, I think that that's when decent. he actually took himself seriously. 
fun. Yeah, but it was, he's still having fun, you can tell. Yeah. Uh, what, was, what was the other movie I liked by him? And this is one not many people remember, because it was one of the first movies I saw with him, <laughs> and one of the first movies I saw with Tommy Lee Jones, uh, Firebirds. Uh, which I played Apache I Pilots. Oh, yeah, okay, no, I, I don't think I've watched that one. I was thinking the one where he... I don't know if he actually becomes a vampire or if he just convinces Oh, uh, a Vampire's Kiss. Oh, dear God. Yeah. Uh, of course, like, uh, <laughs> fucking, The amount uh, of memes from that movie. Uh, what was it? Uh, fucking, uh, Raising Arizona. That was good. Oh, God damn it. Well, that's Coen Brothers. You know that shit's good. <laughs> um... Oh, I don't know if you've seen this, and I don't know... I think it was before we had uh, camera phones. They must have done it with a regular camera, but... There's a great, uh, almost selfie with, uh... From the gr Big Lebowski. It's Jeff Bridges and Sam Elliott. They the one picture. It's like, god damn. <laughs> Two great actors in one. Yeah. That's a movie I need to see. To my Coen Brothers movies. I still have not seen... The remake, their remake of True Grit. I hear that is really good. Oh, the one. Oh yeah, that's yeah. Uh, the one with Jeff Bridges or whatever. Yeah, I mean I've yeah, seen the. Yeah, it was good. It was really I've good. I've seen the John Wayman so many times. I should see. <laughs> Jeff Bridges. There, there was another Western movie that came out around the same time as it, and that one was actually just fucking. That wasn't bad. It's just wasn't all that good. You ain't talking about Bone Tomahawk, are you? No. Oh shit, here's the undead. Ah, you found him. <laughs> now talk Fair about man. a fucked up western movie from at the same time. Uh, um, Bone Tomahawk. In fact, the guy who made that has done so many of these. I know he did, no, uh... Was it... him, you moron. Brawl and so like 19 and uh, dragged across concrete. The guys make some brutal ass movies. Go to the Bang Bros. Yeah, it's Kurt Zoller. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you said, Kai. <laughs> well, last said they made some brutal ass movies, and so, so do the Bang Bros. I don't know what that is, but it's pop it sounds like gay porn, which is probably the joke. Oh, well, they're <laughs> they, they, they they do porn, yeah, but maybe I should have said brazers, but that's that uh, was that would have been too. Sweet. What man? I'm gonna have to let him get away so I can protect myself. From yeah, this freaking undead. Craig Zoller, he did, yeah, Bone Tomahawk, Roll and Cell Walk 99, and Drag to Cost Concrete. Holy crap. In like one long ass fight constantly here. God damn it, flying spells. Hold on. <laughs> Alright. Well, Fear, you need a new gambit slot, buddy. Mm. <laughs> Where's your cheapest gambit slot? 20? Take it. Hopefully I have the actual card I need. Yeah, sense blind. Let's put that there. Pain in the butt. Mm. Now he's gonna be healed again when I find him again. Warp, warp. Disable, oh shit. What exactly does warp will mean anyway? It's really sharp. 
Ah, I was just giving you a sharp and a bunny. You can't with enough shark skin. I kiss. And there's your clothes gone. But the uh, Corporal Bunny is a reference to the Monty Python Corporal Bunny, I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh, Corporal yep. Blade, that's from uh, Jabberwocky. Yep. And that was what the Corporal Bunny in uh, Monty Python was a reference to. Yeah. Don't dare ask a friend to assault that rabbit's dynamite. Snickety snack. There was a Monty Python. Well, it was not a Monty Python movie per se. It had members of the Monty Python in it called Jabberwocky. Actually, since uh, you mentioned Jabberwocky, it made me think of the line in a uh, Dragon Ball Z Bridge. It's like, maybe guess you grabbed the sword and went to Nadia and slayed the Jabberwocky. Bitch, you just yelled <laughs> my stupid say a swagger. I'm going to enjoy this far more than I should. <laughs> I, I'm a dick in a schnoz. I'm sorry, that's a new one. Who are you? I'm Goku, and I'm insane. He means Saiyan. My god, I've really lost my touch in genocides. Or no, between you and the Namekian, I've really lost my touch in genocide. <laughs> we're, going, we're going to Uruguay, Uruguay, Dad. Uruguay. <laughs> 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 this whole series is just three months dead. Three months it took. I'm purple and horny. Chi Chi isn't gonna like this. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember when I uh, still uh, better uh, than the actual series. Frieza could actually <laughs> count the number of times a certain line was said to him. <laughs> you know, and like, you won't get away with this, or we'll fight you to the end, or something. And then when Goku shows up, hey, are you that Freezer guy? I am Lord Freezer, yes. Awesome! I'm a dick in a schnoz. Yeah. I'm sorry, that's a new one. <laughs> no, what, no what, what I thought was even funnier is when those three Namekian guys show up, and the guy's like trying to, he was trying so hard to find a line that Freezer had in her, and he's like, yeah. yeah, well, we're gonna fuck your face. Oh, my! Well... Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, he tried so hard, and in the end, it didn't even matter. <laughs> but that one was like, I'm sorry, that's a new one. <laughs> All right, maybe we'll get the verbal buddy tomorrow. I got my ass hey, kicked by those skeletons. Mm. <laughs> I did like the one. What was it? Uh... Oh, do you ever? There was an episode of the Nostalgia Critic, and he actually had the guy that voices Goku on there, and he had Little Karibo uh, from yeah. uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged, and they were doing, uh, what was it? Uh, Dragon, Dragon, Ball, Dragon Ball Evolution. Evolution. It was hilarious. <laughs> well, you know, Little, Little Karibo is the guy that voiced uh, TFS's Frieza. Yeah, and then of course, uh, the my favorite is still the guy uh, Lanny who voices uh, uh, Vegeta. Lanny and, who voices like so many of the freaking characters in there. Right, and uh, if you ever watch his uh, freaking uh, Twitch channel, mm -hmm. oh god, when they were well, most of the guys were do on uh, Team Four Star were playing with the Guns of Icarus. Oh, he, uh, Lanny was the best part. He was just going well, full what in I, the character. What I really like is when they do their uh, horror game streams because it's Vegeta and Nappa locking Girl in a room saying, yeah. you got to play this game. And Girl's like, <laughs> okay, sure, whatever. That was the best part about that last Dragon Ball Z abridged episode when finally uh, Krillin and uh, 18... <laughs> <laughs> he and drops the, his and head. And and he, he, the own counter starts going down and finally explodes in the end. <laughs> well, what's funny is like, he, she's like, uh, just take off your pants. He does so, and then like you hear this like loud thud. And she's like, yeah. oh my god. And he's like, what? She's like, get in the bed. Get in the bed. <laughs> I'm like, yes, like, let's go. Let's go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. By the way, god, then, before we finish today, I, want, I had... Uh, Something amusing I had to tell you. Mm. Yeah. 
I've gotten through enough of the name of the wind now to the point where it, it has become storyception. I'm in a section of the game where Patrick Rothfuss is telling a story about a guy telling a story about a guy who once told him a story. <laughs> and, and the great thing is, is that <laughs> the way it's delivered is just... It, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like, man, we're, we're three layers of storytelling in at this point. <laughs> Now, imagine bah. for a moment, though, being main character there and being able to keep that up, being able to tell that. I I yeah. If there was any doubt before that mm -hmm. main character is fucking brilliant, may that doubt be gone now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. There's another part. I, I think. No, it was in the first book. Um. Oh, shit. The. I'm trying to think of a point where I could mention it and you'd know what I was talking about without spoiling something in case you haven't. Yeah, uh, better just leave it, probably, then. Yeah, it's so good, though, because you can feel the frustration in this situation. Well, I'll, get, I'll, t I'll say one word that will probably tell you what part of the book I'm in. Scarpy. Okay. Wonderful. That's, this, that's the level of storyception I'm referring to. Yep. Uh... I need to read those again. Yeah, this is the first time I've read a book that is somebody telling a story about somebody telling a story about somebody telling a story. <laughs> story uh, section. Yeah, and exactly. All right. So when I said that we're going to hunt the Vorpal Bunny tomorrow, obviously I mean next Thursday. Right. Yeah. The next time we stream this game. <laughs> mm. Okay. But who can we raid for now? Mm. Let's see. Do I have any buddies? We, we can pull a Russia and raid the Ukraine. <laughs> Luca, yeah, why? that's been that's been done. <laughs> Let's see here. I will always remember uh, the description of Scarpy, though. Also, I'm going to oh, give yeah. myself negative ten points for that one because I said the Ukraine instead of just Ukraine. I don't know why they call it the Ukraine. Like, eyes like diamonds in the body of a driftwood scarecrow. That is, <laughs> yeah, so fucking and, good. And eyebrows like sea foam or something like that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I think that's in the second description of him. But yeah. It's like, man, that, that is one wizened old man. I, well, I can see that gnarled face. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, see, so you got Queen Kitty and Dan Jones as options. Anybody else have suggestions? I got, I got I, nobody. I don't have Twitch open, so I can't say. No. I got nobodies. No. Hmm. All right. Let's see. Queen Kitty is playing something called the Dark Occult. Uh, okay. Is. Uh. And it's not on screen right now, so I can't tell by quick peeking. Uh. So I guess we'll just find out the hard way. Nah. Right. Good night, everybody. Night, night. Yep. Good night. And here we go. Yay. In Ten seconds. Woo. Whoa. Snowcat's real excited. <laughs> what? <laughs>